Okay, now I'm streaming. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I hope we are all having a fantastic time. I am beyond excited to stream for you all here today because I have a brand new game to show off to everybody. While I go through and make sure that all of my settings are ready to go. Why don't you all tell me about how your weekend is going so far, hmm? I see Kay is here in the chat already. Hello, Kay. How's your Saturday been so far? Do anything fun or exciting? Have anything planned for tomorrow, perhaps? I've got Sunday plans, but today, of course, is going to be dedicated to streaming here with all of my friends on YouTube. Very toasty outside, and you got to see your mates again. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. I am looking forward to that as well. Uh, you know, it's been quite a while here, but, you know, as long as everyone is protected, it should be fairly safe, uh, as long as, of course, folks are still taking precautions um, to meet up with friends who have all been vaccinated, depending on what countries uh, folks are living in and what the situation is like there. Um, you can't really predict. It may very well be different, but um, it would be great for us to finally be able to, uh, once again, you know, start meeting up with our friends, going out, doing fun things, and uh, of course, you know, patronizing local businesses, things like that, that may have been uh, suffering up until now. Yeah, it's very important to have stuff to look forward to, you know. Oh, we got, we got a couple people. We got a couple people filing in, slowly but surely. I'm just going through and making my standard posts to all of my standard locations. or at least as many of them as I can remember <laughs> before I have to go ahead and start streaming. All right, I got about one more site to update before we should be ready to get started. Okay. And there we go. Awesome. Our lovely friend Streamlabs bot is up and running and ready to go. So without further ado, I am gonna get us diving right on into Subnautica Below Zero. So this is a game by Unknown Worlds Entertainment. Uh, it is the sequel to a game called Subnautica that came out a couple of years ago. Um, I was turned on to this game by my partner and I 
had such a fun time playing it, you have no idea. This game hits all the buttons for me. Uh, you've got exploring, you've got base building, you've got uh, fun creatures, you've got a scanning mechanism where you basically have to go around um, and study plants and animals and scan them, which is like totally right up my alley. Um, the sequel here, Subnautica Below Zero, uh, is a game that was in, um, it was in beta for a couple years. However, um, we decided to wait and play it until the game was fully and officially launched. Um, so it started actually being available to play in 2019, but only in this year, 2021, was it actually completed. Um, and I greatly enjoyed having waited for the game to be finished before playing it, because you get like a nice whole complete experience. Uh, there are some changes uh, in Subnautica Below Zero between that game and the um, precursor to it. Uh, most notably, we now have a voiced protagonist, uh, and there's also more of a plot built into the game itself. So if anyone who's watching um, is familiar with Subnautica, but not the sequel, I think you will find some very fun and exciting new features here in this game. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the music up so y'all can hear Subnautica as it goes. And um, is that Bomber? Hi, Bomber. Welcome to the stream. I am also going to pop the game information into the chat. Uh, if at any point you'd like to know more about Subnautica Below Zero, you can just type exclamation point game uh, and it'll give you info about the game that I'm currently playing. Uh, as those who may have watched previously know, uh, up until now I was playing a game called The Outer Worlds. I did 10 whole streams playing that game and I have now moved on to Subnautica to make things a little more fun and exciting. If you would like to uh, help select which games I play next on the stream or even recommend to me games uh, that you would like to see me play, you're more than welcome to do so. And the link that is right there in the chat, uh, right about now, uh, should provide you with the information on how you can actually go ahead and influence the games that I play on the stream, if you are so inclined. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new game. Uh, there are different modes here in Subnautica Below Zero. Uh, survival is the base game, essentially, uh, the, the mode by which the developers, you know, the game is intended to be played. You have the story, you're playing as a character going through and uh, trying to figure out what happened to your sister. Um, you do have to deal with uh, meters such as hunger, thirst, oxygen, and temperature, which is a new addition to Subnautica Below Zero, which was not in the base game of Subnautica. Uh, you'll see why as soon as I start playing. Uh, there's also the freedom mode, which I believe is new for them. Uh, you don't have to worry about hunger or thirst, uh, which is much better for folks who just want to play the game more casually and not have that pressure. Uh, hardcore mode is uh, the complete opposite of that <laughs> for folks who want more of a challenge. Uh, it is survival mode and you have only one life. If you die, that's it. You're dead. You have to start all over again. And finally, they have creative mode where uh, there's no story, uh, there's no death, so you don't have to worry about getting eaten by a sea monster. Uh, and you can just go through and uh, build your base and make like a whole really cool, uh, basically under and above water home for your character. Uh, the base building was something that really stood out in Subnautica, the original, and they have completely latched on and updated that for Subnautica Below Zero. There are some great new features. Uh, base building in this game is super, super fun. Uh, when I'm playing by myself, I spend a lot of time working on my bases and making them really cool. Uh, since we're, since I'm doing this on a stream with people, I'm sure you don't want to sit there and watch me play a house for 16 hours. So um, I will be trying to just do like the the very basic minimum when it comes to the base building um, and just try to get through the story so you all can experience that. 
And Xenomnia is here, quickly jumping in to wish you a good stream. Sadly, won't be sticking around as I'm quite afraid of deep dark waters. So that doesn't mesh well with the game, haha. <laughs> no, definitely not, uh, of course. And I really appreciate you showing your support. Um, it's great that you've looked up the game uh, beforehand to make sure that the stuff that was featured in it would be stuff that you enjoy playing. Um, I always write the names of my games in my stream and I let people know information about them before I start streaming. Uh, if at any point uh, you're, you know, unfamiliar with the game that I am playing, you can always uh, just type the name of the game into Google plus ESRB. Um, and that will give you the rating for the game as well as letting you know what kind of content you will find in there. So for content warnings and things of that nature. It's very important for folks to uh, be aware of the type of content that they're consuming online and stay away from stuff, obviously, that will make you feel uncomfortable. I'm going to go ahead and mute this for now. And so we are going to do a survival game. And that little creature, that little cute creature down on the bottom left uh, that they're using as the progress bar or the loading bar, that is a penguin, uh, which is kind of like the mascot of Subnautica Below Zero. You will see much more of them in the future as I progress through the game. And it's taken a little bit of a while to load up. It is a very big game. <laughs> There's a lot to explore, a lot of things to see, a lot of, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to say it. A lot of characters to meet. Also, this is a great game for me to be playing right now because um, in my part of the world, it's summer and it's very hot. So what better way to beat the heat than by playing a freezing cold wintry ocean game? <laughs> Uh oh, that doesn't sound very this is good. The farthest that I can take you on company space bucks, Robin. You sure you want this? The research is in everything. It is to me and Sam. We need to know what happened. The meteor storm. I can use it for cover from Altera's eyes. <sighs> Gonna miss you, Robin. I'll find my way back. down into the water. Oh boy. Oh, there's just debris raining down all over. It's great, good, perfect. So, we are here on planet 4546B. It is an alien planet and we don't know very much about it. I am going to start collecting resources synthesized. And that was the lovely voice of the PDA. Thankfully, we've got this PDA um, that is very helpful 
and basically gives us all the information that we will ever need about things on this planet. Here in the early game, we are starting out with very, very little. So it's important to run around and collect as many resources as we can. Uh, there are nutrient blocks being dropped, uh, as well as water bottles. So that'll stave off our hunger, hunger and thirst for a little bit. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the edges of the screen are starting to get like a little frosty effect. That's because I'm freezing. <laughs> Uh, there are a couple different ways to warm up in this game. As of right now, uh, my best bet is just to get close to the crashed uh, drop pod, which is on fire. <laughs> that will definitely help warm me up. Um, another way that you can get warm is by diving into the water. Water obviously is warmer than the surrounding frozen environment, so it keeps you from dying, basically. All right, looks like my, uh, I didn't want to throw that. I don't want to be holding the flares. Oh, I see what the problem is. Let me see if I can adjust my resolution a little bit. Bear with me one second. because uh, since I have to play this game in windowed mode in order to, uh, that's gonna be a problem. I have to play this game in windowed mode in order to see the chat at the same time that I'm streaming. And because of this, uh, I cannot see some of the buttons at the bottom of the screen. Bear with me just a second here while I try to get that fixed. Uh, okay. All right. You all shouldn't see much of a change on your end, but I can see what I'm doing now. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. Now I know how to put away my friggin' flares. Oh, God. So I'm not wasting them. Oh, oh right. That doesn't pause. Opening a menu doesn't pause in this game. You have to actually pause it. Which I was doing to say hi to Nico, whom I just noticed has arrived in the stream. Hi, how are you doing? You have watched me play Subnautica before in my uh, Discord server. However, oh, smokes. that did not go as planned. I should find a way into the water and get to the drop pod. Good thinking, Robin. Um, however, I don't believe you've seen me play Below Zero, so... This will be a new experience. And I can run a little faster. These flowers here actually provide heat. I don't know if you can tell that, but those are also helping keep me warm as I make my way over to the water. Okay, so first things first, I am going to make a beeline for the drop pod. It contains vital technology and resources that I am going to need in order to survive here. I am not paying attention to any sort of critters or wildlife that we're coming across. I am just beelining it for this here drop pod. Though I will have to come up for a breath of air. When you start off, obviously, you have a very limited um, oxygen capacity, pretty much just as, as much as your lungs will hold. However, as you progress in the game, you can make stuff like O2 tanks that will help you breathe underwater. Found the drop pod. Yeah. Oh, look, hey, looks like we got a message here. I want to offer my sincerest condolences on the passing of your sister. I got to know Sam better 
towards the end of my mandate with Altera on 4546B, when we were thrown together as basemates at Outpost Zero. She spoke often and fondly of you. I thought you should know. It didn't sit right with me when Altera blamed Sam's death on negligence. The Samantha Ayu I met was many things. Kind, clever, devoted to her work, but never negligent. I wish I could offer you something more substantial, but my access to information has been cut off. You may be in a better position to look into things than I am. If you're able to, Delta Station was our HQ. They were in a big hurry to leave, and there might still be information to be found there. It has a big radio tower, impossible to miss. I hope you find the answers you seek. Lillian Bench. Okay. So, we are playing as a character named Robin. She has uh, secretly come here to this planet because um, her sister died here and she wants to get to the bottom of what exactly happened. Uh, she's not supposed to be here at all, uh, if you could not tell already. So, throughout this game we will be unraveling the mystery of what happened to Sam, Robin's sister. Um, if you've noticed, I've just gone ahead and pinned some recipes for things that I'm going to need to build, uh, notably a battery so that I can start making a scanner, and a standard O2 tank so that I can breathe in the water more. Uh, I'm just going to be playing some of these uh, descriptive audio messages as I jump in the water and start gathering resources so that you all can get a bit of background into the plot of this game. Here's a message Robin, from Sam. Guess what? I got the job. I'm going to 4546B. Now I'll be able to improve the mechanical avian amphibian under real world stress conditions. Listen, I know your stance on Altera. But I just hope you're happy your sis is happy. I sure hope my sis is happy. <laughs> I can't wait till we talk again. Oh, I wanted to ask you something. Can you watch my Augie while I'm away? I need someone I can trust to look after my best little potato. Oh. <laughs> potato, listen. I tried, but that name is just not sticking. He's my little octobite. I'll leave the starchy tubers nicknames to you. Anyway, if you say yes, thanks, baby sis. Love you. Well, Sam, I guess I might as well gather some tools and resources before starting my search. Hope that radio tower is as easy to spot as Lil said. Okay, that's a fragment of a sea glide, a uh, piece of technology that we're going to need in order to travel around. Though we cannot yet scan that sea glide fragment until we build a scanner. So I'm grabbing some bladder fish, which are a fish filled with air, um, and you can also use them to purify water, uh, which is very important in the early game before the player really has a chance to, um, you know, a, a more reliable source of purified water. Since, as you can tell, we are on a planet Oxygen. with a salt ocean. So, can't drink any of this that's floating around around us. Ah, there's a supply cache nearby. Thank you, that's very helpful. I'm just trying to grab as many fish as possible. This here is a hoop fish. Hoop New fish. creature discovered. I've just got so many fish. More titanium, a ribbon plant, ribbon which I'm gonna need to build a battery. Materials that can be used in energy storage. Okay. Oxygen. Yeah, 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 I know. Wouldn't it be embarrassing if I died, like, right now? <laughs> okay. I should have enough to build some things at least. Let's see what we've got going on. I was a little nervous about dropping into an unknown area, but luckily, this biome seems to have an abundance of minerals I can use for tools and upgrades. I didn't want another situation like Byzantos 5. When Xenoworks dropped me off, there were barely any resources. I survived off the land for three months with just a knife, my lucky PDA, and some rope. I am still kind of proud of that, though. Perfect. All right, I 
have a scanner. Got a scanner. What else should I be making right now? Um, I've got the O2 tank. Fins would be very helpful. Let's pin the recipe for fins. For this, we need silicone rubber. So I'm gonna also pin the recipe for silicone rubber and drop that right up there. So I know I need this in order to make that. Uh, survival knife is also gonna be a requirement. So I'll put that up there. I really don't use air bladders or flares that much when I play the game. Uh, it's quite adaptive to many different play styles, as you'll see very shortly. Let's uh, hear some more messages from Sam. Four, five, four, four, six B to Robin. Come in, Robin. <laughs> Remember when we used to play old timey space explorer? This is kind of like that, but it's even harder to communicate. <laughs> well, let's see. I got your last message. Altera is not, as you put it, all terrorizing me. Things are going well. My project has a new name. Say goodbye to the mechanical avian amphibian. And hello to spy penguins. Spy penguins. We're training the bots to mimic the creatures. Check out the photo. And I think I'm kind of seeing someone. I, I know it's not like me to just find a date, let alone on a mostly uninhabited water planet. But it, actually, you know what? Forget I said anything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably not even a real thing, but Anyway, um, I'm sorry to hear Xenoworks might be strapped in the revenue department. Sounds like they still have you busy Xenoworking, though. I know there's no way to guarantee an alien intelligence startup will succeed, but you've put so much into it. I hope they find a way to keep going. I know how much it means to you, getting to work in a small place where you have control over your research. All right, I gotta go. Later, baby sis. Love you. There's an emergency uh, supply cache out there, though not anything I'll be able to get to very quickly. Was there something you needed? Okay. Yeah, it's a really cool game. I guess I don't need to scan the quartz. I do need to scan the ribbon plant, though. Oxygen. Uh... Yeah, this game is not very forgiving when it comes to the oxygen. You have a very small window of time in which it allows you to get to the surface before you croak. All right, I gotta be careful because I need to dive down there to get to those plants, but the area is covered by a big sheet of ice. So I have to come at it from a good angle wherein I can avoid drowning. Okay, this here is called creep vine. It's used to make a lot of materials in this game, and it also glows very pretty at night, at least the seed clusters do. And I will need these seed clusters to make silicone rubber. I'm gonna grab as many Oxygen. of them as I can. And rock it up to the surface. Phew, made it. Okay, back to the drop pod we go so that I can make some stuff that will help me survive. And here's an Arctic Peeper! Peepers are a fish from the previous game. New creature discovered. Though we are now in the Arctic biome of Planet 4546b, so here there live Arctic peepers. Much of the fauna that you come across in Subnautica Below Zero um, 
are creatures that did exist in Subnautica. Sometimes they are exactly the same as in the case of the bladder fish, though others have slightly different adaptations in order to live here in um, a more chilled climate. So I'm gonna go ahead and make myself some silicone rubber, which I can now use to make fins. Yeah, fins, that'll help me swim much faster. And I'm gonna make a little more silicone rubber using the creep vine that I picked up so that I can build myself a survival knife. Perfect. With the survival knife, you can cut some resources off. And we are gonna be using that right about now because I need to cut off pieces of creep vine to make creep vine sample. Creep vine sample is used to make fiber mesh and fiber mesh is used to make an O2 tank. So it's a lot of, a lot of stuff like this. A lot of you need this to make this and then once you make this, you can make that and you finally get the things that you need. Hey, Ralph. Got your Augie photo. Thanks so much for taking care of him, even though he's a cranky potato. Hey, the nickname <laughs> actually fits that way. A cranky potato. I know he can be a handful, but I really appreciate it. I'm a bit worried about my other baby, the mission. One of my penguins found something, something big. But Altera is just like, nothing to see here. Honestly, kind of glad you can't answer so you can't you know, rub it in my face. Go ahead, bask Ow. in the fact that you were a little bit right about them. Stop that, you symbiote. My project is on the line. My job, my safety. Um, I heard about Xenoworks getting Here bought. Here we go. I'm sorry, but at least you still have your job. Guess you're one of us now. Like it or not, welcome to the Altera family. I should probably go before I say something I regret. Love you. Keep your chin up. Eye on the alien prize. All right, I'm just gonna fill my inventory with creep vine. Oh, whoops. Okay, maybe I don't need all of that creep vine. I'm actually, oh here, I can drink some water and then pick up that piece of lead that just fell down. Oxygen. Yes, yes, I'm trying. Uh-oh, uh that's a, okay. Well, not uh-oh, that's a sea monkey, but they're kind of troublesome little critters. They tend to steal what you're holding. <laughs> and at this point in the game, I am very encumbered and won't be able to chase after them too easily. Let me make sure I put my fins on. I did. Awesome. I'm seeing some more outcroppings, but uh, inventory full. Got to get back to the pod. Nico says, you look amazing, Shatani, and I love your hair. Thank you so much. I just washed it. I am going to be switching to a new color pretty soon, but... I need to coordinate that with the rest of the stuff that I'm doing in my life to make sure that it won't cause any problems. Alright, fiber mesh, and with that, standard O2 tank. Adding additional blueprints to your data bank. Woo, and now I can make a bunch of the stuff. The standard oxygen like a tank tool. can be upgraded for deluxe and VIP breathing. <laughs> Deluxe and VIP breathing. Can you imagine? Okay. I don't actually need to cook any food yet. I've been doing pretty well in that regard. Um, let's see. I feel like there was something else. Oh yes, I should make some more fiber mesh so that I can create first aid kits. First aid kits are super, super important to have in this game. Um, in Subnautica, 
there was a first aid kit fabricator, but in this game, there is no such thing, and the player has to make their own first aid kits. I'm gonna put some of the things that I don't think I'll really be needing yet here in storage. Uh, I don't need to carry four bottles of water with me. Two should be fine, and I'll be good on food for a while. So I'm gonna put one of my nutrient blocks away uh, just to clear up some inventory space. I've got a lot of quartz, I got some copper ore. Let's listen to another message from Sam. Hey Robin, I'm sorry my last message was so awful. I've been under a lot of stress. I'm not sure what's going on with anything. I can't really talk about it either. Oh, and I'm definitely not dating anyone on this water planet. Don't know what I was thinking there. Have I told you how cold it is here? Get this, I can't even get my wash and go dry before the wind freezes the moisturizer in my hair. Wild, right? Well, anyway, I'm sure you're mad at me after what I said, but I, I could really use a friend. You're my sister. I love you. I'm sorry. Hey, Robin. I really need someone to know. I'm afraid something terrible is gonna happen. You were completely right about Altera, okay? You were right. I was wrong. The cat should be called Potato. I admit it. <laughs> mm, sorry. Bad attempt at a joke. I just... I don't know what to do. Poor Bob. I guess I should just come out and say it at this point. I've said this much already. We found a frozen leviathan that's infected with Kara. Altera thinks they can use it for something. Weapons, experimental treatments, a whole range of things. But one end of the range is ugly, dangerous, but, but profitable, of course. What if it gets out while we're messing around with it? Or worse, what if it ends up a bioweapon in the wrong hands? I, I hope I'm overreacting, but I don't think I am. Anyway, uh, message me back, please. I could really use a friend. You're my sister. I love you. Yeah, so a little bit of background information. In the first game of Subnautica, um, we discovered that there was a bacteria on this planet uh, affecting almost all of the creatures here. It was very deadly, called Kara. So now, uh, though it was in essence cured by the end of the first game, we have now just discovered from Robin's voice, uh, sorry, Sam's voice messages to Robin, that they had found a frozen leviathan infected with Kara. So while the bacterium in the wild had been eradicated, there's now a source of it on this planet. The company that Sam had been working for, of course, wanted to study this and see if it could be used to make money, but this worried Sam greatly. And we don't really know what else happened after that. Uh, the only thing that Robin knows at this point is that her sister died, and the company won't tell her the circumstances of Robin's death. Or Sam's death, excuse me. So she's here to figure out what happened to her sister. And now we've got a little bit of background information about what's been going on on planet 4546B. So I've been swimming around, picking up a couple different resources, things that I'm gonna need to build more stuff. Now I can go over to this here sea glide fragment and scan it. So you find fragments lying around, uh, pieces of technology and stuff that you can scan with your scanner. And once you have the blueprint for the item, uh, you can make it. Isn't technology great? <laughs> it's it's kind of like a 3D printer 
though in real life, 3D printer technology has uh, not advanced that far. Uh, Nico says, don't think I've mentioned this yet, but many fairground organs are a hundred plus years old. Yeah, I could believe that. There are no fairground organs in Subnautica Below Zero. <laughs> fairground organs seem to be something that comes from a different time. They certainly seem more like a, a capsule of, of human history. You don't really see them around too often these days. As a reminder for any folks who may be popping into the stream, hello, my name is Shaitani. I am streaming Subnautica Below Zero right now, which is a first person survival and adventure game from Unknown Worlds Entertainment. Feel free to kick back and relax. Uh, you can just type exclamation point lurk in the chat if you just want to hang out and watch the proceedings very, very quietly. However, uh, you do also earn per points simply by watching the stream as well as being active in the chat with your fellow chatters. And those you can save up and redeem for all sorts of wild, weird, wacky, and wonderful bonuses. You can type exclamation point points in the chat at any time, see how many points you have. And exclamation point redeem will let you see what you can use your points for. I've got a lot of fun and cool redeems that I hope you all will avail yourselves of. And I don't know if you heard, but that was a penguin quacking behind me. And I just picked up a creature egg. Creature eggs are super duper cool, at least to me, because I love animals, of course. Um, but you can find eggs in the game. In the beginning, you don't know what each egg will hatch into. Um, once the player progresses a little bit into um, the stage of the game where they've built a base, you can hatch the eggs in tanks, and in that way, you can kind of have a captive critters in your home. Uh, some of the, the critters that we've come across so far, these little uh, edible fish swimming around, like the arctic peeper, the hoop fish, and the bladder fish, um, those are passive creatures. However, as you can imagine, <laughs> there are much more dangerous creatures in this game and they are also much bigger um, so hatching eggs of those larger creatures is the only way that the player can uh, essentially get a captive specimen of those species at, so at one point once you get a tank up and running um, it basically acts as a self-renewable source of food you don't have to go out hunting anymore because your peepers or whatever fish you've got in there just keep breeding and you can uh, use them for sustenance. The leviathans and the other creatures, they, I don't think they can breed. Oh, who was that? Who redeemed? Oh, it was Nico. Nico just redeemed drink, so... Very fitting for our undersea exploration here. Um, don't forget while you're swimming about in the water to also take a drink of water and make sure that you are hydrated. So I've got my water here as usual. Everybody watching at home, you've got to take a drink as well. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, Nico, for redeeming that and reminding me that I need to stay hydrated because I had been streaming for 45 minutes already, which I didn't even notice. The time sure flies when you're playing an exciting game like this. Uh, so thank you for reminding me to pay attention to my health. 
And as usual, I will ask everybody at home what it is that you are all drinking right now. I am having water as I usually do when I am fursuiting because of course water is the best um, uh, hydration method. Second, perhaps to sports drinks, but I don't really drink sports drinks when I'm fursuiting at home. Oops, excuse me for a second, I gotta fix my chair. <laughs> I don't really drink for, uh, sports drinks when I am uh, suiting at home doing my streams because I'm not like jumping and running around as much. Um, though you do need to replenish those electrolytes if you were say at a convention, um, you know, being very, very active, especially in the summertime. Right about now is when I would have normally um, been started getting ready for Anthrocon. Anthrocon, once again this year, uh, is doing a virtual event that is going to be live streamed on their YouTube channel. Oh, I found another sea glide fragment that's super, super useful. Um, so yes, Anthrocon will be live streaming on their YouTube channel. They will also have a VR chat world for all of you virtual reality furs. I'm not that kind of a, <laughs> a VR chat doesn't really appeal to me. I've given it a try, but there's just too many stumbling blocks for it to get it for me to get into it. I much prefer fursuiting on camera uh, than using a virtual avatar, which is why I don't use like a what are they called? Like a little like a VTuber thing. Um, a lot of other furries do VTubing while they're streaming. I can see why it's way easier. <laughs> You don't have to get all suited up just to do a live stream. Thank you, PDA. And look, my player character, Robin, she needs to drink too. Let me have a couple sips of water here. And let me also unload a few of my sundries. Like, I don't need to carry that creature egg around. I won't even be able to use it for quite some time. Though I will hang on to it for the time being. Let's see what else we can fabricate while we're here. And let me make sure that I didn't miss any questions in the chat. Uh, Nico said, tell your partner I said hi. Yes, she stepped out for the moment, but I will make sure that I say hi to her when she comes back. Um, he also asks, this takes place in the Arctic only. Uh, yes, Subnautica Below Zero, as the Below Zero part of the title uh, indicates, uh, does take place in the Arctic only. Subnautica, the uh, predecessor game, has a variety of biomes in it. However, the Arctic is not one of them. They were, uh, Unknown Worlds Entertainment intended to put the Arctic biome in the original game of Subnautica, but they didn't get around to it. Uh, they decided to focus more on the biomes that they had already had made, um, which I think ended up for the best as they were able to focus on Subnautica Below Zero as its own standalone game and allow them to dedicate uh, more time and resources to the previous game, getting that nice and complete, and now getting this game nice and complete. So they're both like uh, little tidbits, little uh, separate games that stand up very, very well. Uh, let's see. Nika's just drinking water. That's cool. I would prefer sports drinks when I fursuit. Yeah, maybe. Um, it depends on what kind of fursuiter you are. And I accidentally saved the game. I didn't mean to. But that's okay. <laughs> I was trying to close out this menu. I've got an O2 tank. I've got fins. I've got first aid kits in my back. Uh, a compass. Okay. Let's try to make a compass next. So I'm going to put the compass up here. For this, we need copper wire and a wiring kit. I can already make copper wire from the copper that I have. And what's needed for a wiring kit now? We've need, we need two silver ore. Silver ore, not something that I have yet come across. So I'm going to have to do a little more exploring. Also a repair tool for that. We'll need crystalline sulfur. Um, another resource that I have yet to discover out in the world. And I also want to make a flashlight. We need a battery for that and we need glass. Glass I can make out of two pieces of quartz. 
and a battery I can also make out of two ribbon plants and copper ore. So that is all set, and now let me make the flashlight. Here we go! Uh, I'm just gonna put the survival knife first and the scanner second. Uh, at this point in the game, I don't have the ability to recharge batteries, so I'm gonna wanna make sure that I have enough batteries for the things that I want to use, the tools that I want to use. Uh, when the batteries run out, I'm just gonna have to make more. Uh, I don't need an air bladder. Uh, sea Glide I would love to have, but we are still missing one piece that will show us how to make a Sea Glide. And yes, there are night and day cycles on this planet, which are very cool. Um, as far as I'm aware, those do not impact gameplay at all. Um, you know, uh, there aren't certain creatures that are only available in the day or in the nighttime, but it does add to the atmosphere and the planet looks really cool. Uh, it looks like the sky is pretty stormy right now, so it's hard to see, but you can see a little bit of uh, the Aurora Borealis above me, which is very pretty. I am going to make a foray towards the emergency supply cache. And I have my knife out. Oh, before I do that, I wanted to show you all this fish. So this fish right here is a titan hole fish. It is very stupid and very cute. Now, um, I have already scanned the titan hole fish. Uh, if anyone here is, oh, hey there, you little sea monkey. What's going on? You gonna take my knife? I don't want you to do that, so I'm gonna stay away from you. Thank you. Uh, the Titan Holefish actually secretes oxygen. Ow! <laughs> uh, but the symbiotes protect the Titan Holefish from predators, so you can use them to breathe if you're in a pinch. Though you have to make sure that you don't get pinched by the symbiotes. Uh, and there you can see just this absolutely beautiful and breathtaking view. Gorgeous. Uh, in the previous game, there was not very much um, land exploration. Oh, another sea glide fragment! Awesome! I'm going to go right back home and build that. Um, right, so there was not very much uh, above water exploration in the previous game. In this game, you do exploring uh, both on land and under the sea, which is very cool. So I just want to look in the data bank real, here, real quick here. Um, as you scan plants and animals, uh, it brings you these really fun and descriptive databank entries, which, you know, you can sit here and read these and learn more about the creatures. Uh, the, the plants, the flora, are not super duper interesting. It's the fauna where stuff really gets uh, fun. So, large herbivores, the titan holefish. A large docile herbivore which emits oxygen and is defended by the small aggressive symbiotes which accompany them. Slow, stupid, and delicious. So no, I was not being rude. It is a fact that the Titan hole fish is dumb. <laughs> Complex gills line the inside of the hole, drawing cold water in and emitting warm oxygen-rich water in its place. So that's how the fish breathes or respirates. It attracts symbiotes, which make the whole fish their home and fiercely ward off any approaching life forms. Um, which is helpful since the Titan whole fish is completely defenseless. Migrates more or less at random, feeding from nutrients deposited by the symbiotes. Uh, so if anyone here is familiar with actual um, animal biology, you may notice that uh, the Titan whole fish greatly resembles the mola mola, uh, or the sunfish, which is a real fish that exists, 
Uh, it is a, just a big, flat fish, and they're just kind of evolutionary leftovers. They just float around and do nothing, and they're very dumb and very cute. <laughs> so, uh, Unknown Worlds Entertainment and the game developers took inspiration from the Mola Mola, the sunfish, uh, as it's called in Animal Crossing. If you play Animal Crossing, you will know what a sunfish is. Um, and it, I think it's so cute. They took inspiration from that fish to make this Titan Hole fish. The Titan Hole fish has evolved entirely beyond basic survival mechanisms like speed, intelligence, or hunting. It exists in a semi-permanent state of unreflective calm, uh, which translates to no thoughts, head empty, <laughs> swimming forward on impulse, fully trusting the complex ecosystem which supports it. Assessment, valuable oxygen source if you can reach it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Ardonix, I see an Ardonix here in the chat. I'm gonna say hello to you. Hi, Ardonix. Bear with me one second while I spell your name correctly due to the pause. <laughs> I don't believe I have uh, seen you here in the stream before, so welcome. I'm glad that you stopped by to watch me play some Subnautica Below Zero here today. Uh, you can just type exclamation point lurk if you want to hang out and lurk in the chat. That is totally fine. Otherwise, you are more than welcome to talk and discuss and make new friends with all of the wonderful folks here. You earn per points simply by watching the stream as well as being active in the chat, uh, which you can redeem for all sorts of cool and fun things. Make me do weird stuff, make stuff pop up on the screen, all that kind of thing. Uh, you can type exclamation point points to see how many points that you have uh, and exclamation point store um, to redeem your points. So yeah, let's make sure that there aren't any more. Uh, here's a message from Robin we can listen to. In goes the battery and titanium. Now comes a scanner. Every xenobiologist's favorite tool. This planet has some fascinating flora and fauna, and I can't wait to learn about them. This will also give me access to a greater tool set. I'm assuming Altera left behind tech that I can scan for blueprints. That should make surviving and exploring out here a bit easier. Don't worry, Sam. I haven't forgotten I'm here for you. But it can't hurt to do a little research on the side, right? I know you would have done the same. I will find out what happened to you. I promise. And it looks like Van has stopped by the stream as well. Hi, Van. It's wonderful to see you here. I am playing Subnautica Below Zero, which is a super fun game that I am so excited to show off to everybody. Right now, I am trying to collect the resources to build a sea glide, which I don't really want to leave home without, as we are going to be traveling farther away from the base, which puts us in the territory of some very no-no critters. <laughs> um, and we want to be able to get away from them as fast as possible. One thing to note about Subnautica um, and Subnautica Below Zero, its sequel, of course, uh, these games do not comprise combat at all. Um, if an animal or if you're being attacked by a creature, your only option is to run away. You do have the knife in a pinch, but it does not do very much damage. Um, there are no guns, there are no weaponry in this game at all. It's, it's very much a game about exploring. So uh, if a creature is threatening you, um, you've got to be able to get away from it in this game. You cannot really make a stand. Therefore, the glide is a personal transportation device used for high-speed free diving. Contains a built-in light and map. Perfect. Yes. Therefore, as I was saying, the sea glide is integral to traveling in Subnautica. It takes up four slots in your inventory, but honestly, it is a necessity. I'm going to make sure that I have my tools arranged. <laughs> Somebody has redeemed something. Nico redeemed a chirp. We gotta give you some chirps now. Ow! 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 
there you go. There are your cheetah chirps. I hope you enjoyed them. As a reminder, you can always type exclamation point fact in the chat to learn a fact about cheetahs, one of which being the fact that cheetahs do chirp. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, yes, uh, plant material does decompose in this game. <laughs> Vange has just redeemed cat time. Wasn't that fun? That was a little clip of me playing around with my kitty cat. I love cats so much, as evidenced by the fact that I chose a feline as my persona. I have always lived with cats. Cats are super great. I love cats so much. And my little kitty cat um, is accustomed to my fursuit now. Uh, at the beginning, she was not a fan at all. But, you know, um, seven years is enough time for any critter to really get accustomed to a fursuit. Um, so yes, uh, plant material like frost anemone hearts and these bullseye shroom pieces, uh, those do decompose uh, even if you have them in storage. Later in the game, you will um, the player will come across a certain technology that helps prevent that. However, I've just started out, so I don't really have that. Um, they can still be used to craft materials, which is why I'm keeping these. Uh, but you can't eat them. They're going to make you sick if they're decomposed. See, uh, that gives you a food of only plus two and an H2O of minus three. Uh, once these get completely rotten, they're actually going to do a negative on your health. So you're not going to want to eat them, but they can still be utilized. Speaking of eating, uh, I'm going to go ahead and eat a nutrient block because I'm getting pretty hungry. Or actually, I'm not going to do that because I'm in a menu. I'm going to get out of the menu, and then I'm going to eat the nutrient block. Um, food, you can go up above 100. So if you eat a piece of food that gives you more um, food points than your hunger, you don't have to worry about wasting it. The same cannot be said for water, however. You cannot um, overindulge in water. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep an eye on your water level and only drink as much water as necessary. I've got 28 water, so I'm going to drink a couple of these filtered waters. Uh, that will be fine for me. Ah, uh, yes, this feature is so cute. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I spent a lot of time um, putting in redeems and features that I thought folks would find engaging. I want to make sure that everybody who watches my streams has a fun time. Uh, even for the people who may not want to talk in the chat, or ask me questions, or even, uh, like, you know, engage with the game that I'm playing. I want to make sure that there is a little bit of something for everyone. Alright, so now, we are heading into a different biome. As you see, there are fewer plants around, and there's more of these big old ice flows. So here's, there's going to be a lot of stuff for me to scan. Like this mineral detector fragment. And those PDAs will contain vital information. Uh, I'm telling you, Sammy, you see some weird things when you spend half your day in a sea truck. More vandalism? Was it the sea monkeys again? I don't think so. I can't shake the feeling this planet is cursed. <laughs> There's no such thing as a curse. Yeah, you're probably right. That's nothing. You wouldn't want to hear about it anyway. Just a huge creature frozen in ice. What? Where? In a cave, not far from your lab. And here's the extra weird part. As soon as I called it in, they closed off the area. Don't want anyone going in there. Hmm. But why? Sammy, I'm no biologist, but I think there was something wrong with it. Its skin just seemed off. Alien. An alien on planet 4546B. No. I'm serious, <laughs> Sam. Something ain't right. Wish I could show you, but I can't get back in there. You can. But I might know how to. Whatever you're thinking, we never had this conversation. Uh, 
All right, some suspicious stuff. Sounds like Fred might have been uh, the person who tipped Sam off to that frozen Leviathan. Nico asked uh, how my cat Warning. first reacted to my first suit when I got it. I think I pretty much already answered that question. Uh oh, that sound behind me is a crash fish. Ow. I was trying to get away from it, but was not able to. <laughs> I apologize for not showing you the crash fish, but uh, the crash fish is a fish that lives in the walls. And if you come close to it, they will come out and they essentially kind of like try to kamikaze dive bomb Warning. you and then they explode. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Yes, yes lady, I know. I'm trying my best to make it up to the surface before I croak. I'll make it. I'll just gotta be a little bit more careful next time. There we go. Oh, and it looks like while I was uh, being accosted by a crash fish, there was a cheetah fact redeemed. Cheetah fact number 30. Shatani is nearsighted and needs to wear glasses, but real cheetahs have exceptional vision. They can spot their prey from up to three miles away. Yup, that is a very important cheetah fact. Cheetahs need to have such good vision so that they can track their prey. So when you scan a fragment that you already have, like that sea glide fragment that I just scanned, um, the game gives you extra titanium, which is pretty cool. So it's not a waste. Uh, titanium is one of the most basic building materials that you'll come across in this game. Um, it is pretty abundant, but when you get into a stage where you're building like a big base or some large vehicles, the player ends up in uh, a situation where you do need large quantities of titanium. Um, so it can actually be helpful to make note of where those pieces of equipment are so that you can scan them and just get four pieces at once. Van says, I love the ocean. Sadly, I don't get a lot of opportunity to visit it. The smell makes me so calm. Yeah, the ocean is really great. It has been a very long time as well since uh, I was able to visit the ocean. Um, I used to go there quite frequently when I was young. Oh, Argentite! I need this badly! Argentite ore is how you get silver. And silver is what I will need to make a wiring kit. Which I need to make a compass. Uh, I'm gonna, oops. Hang on, well, first I'm gonna go breathe. I love the ocean so much. Uh, it's been a few years since I've had the opportunity to go there. I love going to the beach. I would love, whenever I did, um, one of my favorite things to do at the ocean was to collect shells and look around for shells. Uh, oh, this here is a sea monkey nest. Sea monkey nests, uh, see, sea monkeys are little devils. Oxygen. Oh, shoot, heck. Heck and shoot, I think I might die. Come on, 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 come on! Oh, by the skin of my teeth. Okay, I'm gonna save the game so that doesn't happen again. Um, all right, so what was I saying? Oh yes, um, do I have a favorite sea creature? Oh, there are so many sea creatures that are so, so very cool. Uh, a little bit earlier, I don't know if you were here, but I, oh my God, there was an oxygen plant right there that I could have used to breathe. Well, anyway. Um, Earlier, I was talking about the Mola Mola, or the sunfish, which is such a goofy little fish. Oh no, my inventory is full. Let's see if I can, like, drink something. There we go. That'll let me pick up that creature egg. Uh, let's use the sea glide to get back to base a little bit more quickly. Uh, the Mola Mola was referenced in this game for the Titan Holefish. They are very stupid creatures, and they are very cute. 
feather starts, yeah, there's so much um, marine life that looks bizarre and completely otherworldly. Um, that's part of what I enjoy about Subnautica, that they use the, that inspiration from actual things that exist on our planet, because a lot of those, those, uh, those creatures, that flora and fauna, it looks so alien. So like, you know, when uh, movie or TV show creators are trying to come up with uh, weird looking creatures for their media properties, oftentimes you don't have to go much farther than the depths of our very own planet. Like, anglerfish are so bizarre looking. Like, if someone showed you a picture of that, you would never believe that it is a real thing that not only exists, but also exists on our very planet. Here's another sea monkey nest. Um, sea monkeys are very mischievous creatures, and they like to steal stuff. So a lot of the time, sea monkey nests will be a source for the player to find pieces of technology that they may not have. Like for example, you just saw me go up to that sea monkey nest and it had a sea glide fragment in it. Um, earlier I scanned a sea monkey nest that had a, um, a mobile vehicle bay fragment in it. I'm going to see if I can find a titan hole fish to show you. Uh, so titan hole fish are often found in the ice flow regions. I still don't have a compass built yet, so I don't know which cardinal direction I'm swimming in. Uh, but the good thing about Subnautica is that it relies heavily on visual cues to show the player where they are. So even if you get lost, you can generally find your way around. Subnautica doesn't have a map in it. Um, Subnautica Below Zero has included a map, but that, that is something very situational. There isn't a map of the ocean. Um, I don't really have a problem with that because, like I said, the game does very well at making the player use their environment and landmarks as a kind of um, a way for them to navigate around. I'm here. Oh, here's a, cre a creature I haven't scanned yet. A brine wing. A brine wing is a fish that will shoot out frozen water and freeze its prey. And if you threaten them, they will freeze you too. Uh, and then you have to break out of the ice before you can move again, which can cause problems. I'm going to eat this frost anemone heart. It will give me a little bit of food and a little bit of water. There's a titan whole fish. Look. <laughs> They're so goofy. Uh, you can see how the mola mola was used as inspiration for the titan whole fish. I love it. There are a lot of other creatures in this game uh, from which inspiration was taken from actual real life animals, the penguins, obviously, uh, I'm pretty sure I don't need Oxygen. to tell you what earth animal inspired a penguin, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, I've got to pay more attention to my oxygen. Let me head back. I'm pretty far away from the pod, so let me start heading back. Hi, system. I'm glad to see you here in the stream today. That was not a donut fish. That was a titan hole fish. Um, Subnautica is a game that does not pause when you're in the menu. So please excuse me while I get to a safe location before I show you uh, the information about the titan hole fish. <laughs> Uh, Subnautica is a survival game, and I am playing on survival mode. You can turn that off if you wish to play more casually, uh, but I have that feature on. So I need to worry about things like oxygen, not drowning. I need to worry about uh, temperature, not freezing. And I also need to worry about hunger and thirst. 
So once I get into this here uh, base, we're gonna be nice and safe. So let me show you uh, what I had shown the viewers earlier, which is the data bank entry about the Titan whole fish. Um, so yeah, here's a Titan whole fish. It's actually a version of a fish in Subnautica called the whole fish. Um, that in Subnautica, it was pretty much just like a little fish with a hole in it, but um, in Subnautica Below Zero, and uh, yeah, they don't have a whole fish in this game. They have the hoop fish, but not the whole fish. Uh, but then in Subnautica Below Zero, which is the sequel, they expanded on a lot of the flora and fauna, and they gave some of them specializations for the Arctic environment, which features in this game. So yeah, there's the Titan whole fish. Um, as the description explains, they produce oxygen. So the player, um, you know, gameplay wise, the player can use this fish in order to breathe if you need air really fast and you can't make uh, your way all the way up to the surface. Uh, the Titan whole fish is very stupid and slow and has no natural defenses. So they are surrounded by symbiotes, which are inspired by the remoras, which are a fish also known as a sucker fish that hangs out around sharks and other bigger creatures. Um, so the symbiote is the game's version of the remora. Um, and those protect the titan whole fish from predators. Uh, as you can see here, a small fast predator which nests inside the hole of the titan whole fish and defends them at all costs. Symbiotes feed mostly on overconfident predators, which attack the titan whole fish, yeah. Expending huge energy reserves to move quickly and strike their targets, the symbiote is dependent on receiving additional warmth and oxygen from the titan whole fish. Symbiotes lay their eggs inside the gills of the titan whole fish. The waste left behind is absorbed by the titan, contributing all the nutrients it needs to survive. Assessment, catch or neutralize to approach the titan whole fish. Um, so as the name indicates, symbiote, they have a symbiotic relationship with the titan whole fish. Uh, it's a mutually beneficial for both creatures. As somebody who enjoys nature um, and biology, uh, this is a feature of Subnautica that really, really appeals to me. I love swimming around, scanning everything that I can find in the game and learning about all of the cool plants and animals uh, that they have here on this alien planet. Yeah, molas are so big. They are absolutely huge. There was a viral video a while back of some guy completely flipping out. Uh, I think he was... I think he was from Boston, uh, or he had like a like a funny accent, and he was flipping out seeing a mola mola in the water. Like, oh my God, call the Coast Guard! What is that? Is that a baby shark? They're really big. Uh, it looks like there was a message from Rel, uh, who might be a newcomer to the stream. Sorry, I missed that. I was too busy having fun and chatting with my friends. Rel says, why are you pretending to be an animal? Good question. Um, I uh, participate in a hobby which is known as the furry community. I love animals a whole bunch. Uh, I love nature and biology and things like that. Uh, my favorite animal is the cheetah. And I also like costuming and cosplaying. So I combined those interests of mine to come up with this original character, which I am wearing a costume or fursuit of right now. I will put the link into the chat for the information about my fursuit, uh, which was created by the wonderful Magpie Bones. Uh, this is a very one-of-a-kind fursuit that utilizes not only my real eyes, but also my real hair as part of the costume. Yep, kleptofish people, that's a very good um, explanation of the sea monkeys. I have been trying really hard so far to not have a sea monkey steal my stuff, because then you have to chase them down and get it back, and if they steal, like, your sea glide, now you can't swim really fast, so I'm just like staying away from the sea monkeys as much as possible. They're, they're not mean, it's just how they are. They're, you know, they're mischievous little critters, like actual monkeys, and they just want to take your, take your shinies, you know. 
more like ravens in that regard, actually. Yeah, they definitely put a lot of thought into all the creatures in this game. I enjoy it very much and it makes the game super duper fun for me. I played the first Subnautica game and I enjoyed it a ton. And the sequel here is also very, very fun. I enjoy it a bunch. I'm just making sure that we don't have any logs or voice messages. Uh, yet we've already heard that one about the sea monkeys. And this is not a voice message, so I think we're about, we're pretty good to go here. Okay, I still don't have enough silver ore to make a wiring kit. I'm gonna have to swim around some more. I thought I made copper wire for a compass. Oh, I probably put it away. And I still need crystalline sulfur to make a repair tool. Though I don't really have to worry about a repair tool that much because I don't have any large vehicles. Later on in the game, the player gets uh, more and more vehicles. Uh, looks like, so beacon manager, you can turn on or off various beacons. There we go. So that's gonna show me where the emergency supply cache is. I'm gonna head back in that direction. Hello, Titan Holefish. Oh, watch this, watch this. You can swim right through them. Isn't that so fun? Eh, there you go. <laughs> and the whole fish is just like, uh, look, it's about to crash into the ocean floor. They're so dumb. Ow, ow. <laughs> the sim see, the symbiotes are trying to protect the whole fish from me. Sorry, guys. I'm not threatening your whole fish friend. I was just trying to do a fun trick. And there's a sea monkey. Uh, I'm gonna hold something. Watch. Okay, here. Hey, sea monkey, hey. You gonna take my knife? Oxygen. Up. Some of the wildlife down here is very grabby. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I almost drowned. Let me try to get my knife back from that sea monkey. Uh-oh. Wrong sea monkey. Are you the sea monkey that has my knife? Are you the sea monkey that has my knife? Have, have you guys seen a sea monkey? He went that way? He was holding a knife? Yeah, thankfully I switched to the knife and not my sea glide. Uh, but yeah, so you can see how uh, they can be a little bit of a menace. Is it one of you? Are you, oh, yeah, I got it back, woohoo. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the fish, is, the fish is like, oh, do we know each other? Something's trying to eat me. Uh, it was a brine wing. And there's another egg, which I will hang on to for later. I've already got that kind of egg. Right now, what I'm looking for, do I have this egg yet? Mm, I don't think so. If you could get Ooh. me a drink of water. water. Yes, so we've got another water redeem. I'm just gonna really quick get up to the surface. Okay, so who was that? That was Van. Thank you. You are so good at that. Gotta stay hydrated. Yes, even when you are swimming around in the ocean. Uh, and uh, actually even more of an excuse to to stay hydrated because salt water is very dehydrating almost got it <sighs> wonderful Thank you for redeeming that and helping me keep track of my hydration. Van is having watermelon, which counts. Absolutely, watermelon, isn't watermelon like 90% liquid? Um, it's a great fruit to have in the summertime uh, to stay hydrated, plus it's very, very tasty. 
Lining Wolf is here. Hi, Lining. Thanks for stopping by the stream. I know you've been here before. I'm playing a new game this week called Subnautica Below Zero. Now this is the place that I was at before. Oh, a beacon. Uh, uh, stop that. I was about to scan something. Give it back, you horrible, horrible monkey. Give me it. So I was going to scan this here beacon. Use beacons to mark traverse territory. Show or hide the signals of your choice with your Xenoworks ADA. Now with surface support. Beacons are very useful for helping the player keep track of locations. Um, this location I have pretty much cleared out, so I will no longer need to keep track of where it is. Uh, that's the only reason I picked that beacon up, otherwise I would have left it where it was, so that I could um, mark this location. I'm going to use a Titan Holefish to breathe, and really fast I'm going to get away. <laughs> Get away from the, uh, the symbiotes. I think... Oh my god! Look, that Titan Holefish is sideways! It's always so fun to come across them because they're just, like, struggling. Here's a fragment of a light stick. Finding the technology pieces is also helpful because it shows the player where... Uh, people have been in the game. So it kind of, if you follow bits of technology, it'll lead you towards places. Van, I'm going to turn off the light to save battery on my uh, Sea Glide. Van says, I was having Mountain Dew earlier, which my cat had apparently never seen before, and investigated by flinging it all over the place. Oh no. Uh, cats are so fun, but they can also be very, very mischievous. I hope uh, it didn't cause too much of a problem. Uh, spilling water is one thing, but Mountain Dew is really syrupy, and uh, it can mess up electronics and stain stuff. So I hope your little kitty cat uh, did not cause you too much of an issue by being a very mischievous little kitty. Struggling, the relatable fish. Titan hole fish are very relatable. Uh, no, I don't need more copper right now. What I need is Argentite to give me silver. Uh, another sea glide fragment. I'm not gonna bother scanning it because my inventory is almost full as it is. So the music has changed. Oh, you just saw that brine wing uh, eat another fish. The fish do have uh, realistic predator and prey behaviors in this game, which is also super duper cool. Um, and you may have heard the music change, which indicates that I am passing into a different biome. Altera, beacon signature detected. Unique identifier. Delta Station Dock. Oh, we're Delta coming. Delta Station. This is the place Lil mentioned in her message. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's worth checking out. Okay, I'm not going to bother breathing from that Titan Hole fish because I can get some air right here. Van says, I've not looked too much into the game. What is the game goal? Um, so this is Subnautica Below Zero. Yes, Silver Ore, nice. Um, this is Below Zero, which is the sequel to the game Subnautica that came out a few years ago. Um, in Subnautica Below Zero, you play as a voiced character from the first time named Robin. Um, her sister worked for this company called Altera. 
She was stationed here on this alien planet. Uh, she died and the company does not really want to tell her very much about what had happened to her sister. So, oops, ow, so, symbiote, please. Um, so she came here. What the heck is this? I have not seen that before. Is that like a glitch? Ow, symbiote. Uh-oh. Brian Wing got me. Ow, ow. Okay, let me get up to the surface. Um, so basically, you're playing as Robin, and she's trying to figure out what happened to her sister, Sam. And uh, at the same time, she's trying to survive on this alien planet that she crash-landed on. Here's another beacon fragment. Oh, I know what these are. That's a thing that I don't use in this game. Okay, let me get up to the surface before I avail myself of those resources. Thankfully, it's daytime. Uh, let's see, I can drink some water and I can eat some nutrient blocks. I can also use a health kit. Oh, I've got two of this egg. I don't need two, so I'll drop one. And now I can go ahead and pick up whatever they've got in here. There's another nutrient block and something I can scan, a desk. These are just furniture pieces that you can scan. Uh, here's a data box, which is gonna give me, uh, okay. Data boxes will sometimes give you blueprints. If you already have the blueprint, just like scanning something, you will simply get back uh, some titanium for it. I kind of want to follow... Oh god, it's really dark. There's... There's the sun. Let me save real quick. The sun is setting, it looks like. Yeah, so it's a survival exploration game, but it's also a mystery game as you try to figure out what happened uh, to your sister. Those are, I forget what it's called, but it's some kind of indicator. It's different than the beacon, but I don't really use them very much. It's, uh, they're supposed to help you like find your way out of deep caves and things of that nature. Uh, it is really dark and it is nighttime and I'm in an area that I have not been before, so I'm being pretty wary. One thing to say about Subnautica, it uses environmental cues very well. For the most part, if there is a dangerous animal nearby, the game will do a, a good job of conveying that to the player. Uh, I've already got that type of egg. Um, the game will use environmental cues to convey that to the player. Usually they will make some sort of terrifying noise. That can, however, backfire because a lot of animals in this game make very terrifying noises. Um, especially and including harmless animals. Uh, there is a big animal in this game which doesn't actually hurt the player, but it makes like a really loud roar that sounds quite scary. So uh, oftentimes I find myself lulled into a false sense of security where it's like, oh, that's just a such and such. And then it turns out, no, it was something else that can and will eat you. <laughs> But thankfully, I now have enough silver to make myself a compass. So I'm just heading on back to my drop pod so that I can build that. That will really help me navigate. Okay, time to make a wiring kit. All set with that. 
I think I put my copper wire away. Or maybe not. Did I use it to build something else? I might have used it to build something else. So that's not a problem. I can make more copper wire. I have plenty of copper on me. And now I can make a compass. A uh, compass is considered equipment. But a boom. So it's not like an object, it's just kind of on you. So like now when I go out in the water, see up there at the top of the screen, the compass shows me what direction I'm facing in. Deep sea creatures are very, very spooky. Let's check what I've got in storage. Well, I'm gonna put this egg in there. I don't need to be holding eggs. I really don't use flares very much, so I will store those flares as well. I have two nutrient blocks on me. I have a first aid kit, which is great. I also have one bottle of water. I am gonna use some bladder fishes to make water. So, Water, filtered water, you make filtered water with a bladder fish. H2O, six ounces, filtered using an all organic membrane, non-vegetarian. Sadly, you do kill a bladder fish in order to make water. Have fun lurking system. And I have yet to cook any fish due to the fact that I've been subsisting off of nutrient blocks so far. Nutrient blocks are one of the best uh, food items in the game. They give you a plus 75 to food. However, if I wanted to cook fish, I would do so from the fabricator. Um, you can cook the fish or you can cure it using salt. Um, cooking is like the basic thing. You can do that without anything else if you've got the salt to cure a fish. Um, that is highly recommended as they will not spoil. However, since the fish is now salty, it does take a little of your hydration away. So you're gonna have to make sure that you drink more water. That's not, that's kind of negligible though. Uh, I'm a little peeved because my Sea Glide battery is low. Maybe I should make another battery. All right. So this is how you replace batteries in this game. You pull out the item, you hit R, and then you switch out the battery. Oop, I'm going to turn off the light and pull my knife back out. And then the used battery I will put in storage. Uh, there are battery rechargers in the game. I am very early on in the game though, so I don't have that technology yet. Uh, let's go north. And see what we can find. Uh, filtering water is a, a future build. <laughs> um, there is a water filtration system that you can build for your base in the game. There is also a suit uh, there are different suits that the player can obtain, one of which is called the Still Suit. Uh, that is a reference to Dune, if you are familiar with the books and or movies of Dune. Um, there's a lot of stuff in Subnautica that is uh, referential to Dune, actually. The, the creators clearly enjoyed uh, that book a whole bunch. But yes, um, the Still Suit is a suit that you can obtain which recycles water from the player's body. Yes, that means exactly what you think it means. Um, <laughs> and the game references that as well. Uh, but yeah, that can be used to passively generate water. Uh, in the original game of Subnautica, I wore the still suit all the time because it kept me from having to worry about hydration. Um, in this game, hydration is less of a concern for me because there are a greater number of ways that the player can obtain hydration. There are fruits and things that the player can eat, such as the anemone hearts, the sea anemone hearts. Um, oh, yeah, I'll scan that. Now I can build a mobile vehicle bay. 
Not that that'll do me much good, because I don't have blueprints for any mobile vehicles yet. One thing at a time. Sea Monkey, I would really prefer if you not steal from me right now. Thank you. I'm just trying real quick to go around and scan things. Grab some root pustules. Warning. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Yes. Depth is a thing that you need to worry about in this game. Uh, as previously stated, I am in the early game right now, so I can't go very deep at all. As the player progresses, they will encounter technologies. Oh, there's a crash fish. I'm going to try to scan it. Oh, that's not a crash fish. What's that? That's a spinner fish. That's a crash fish, though. Ugh. I actually just missed New being crashed discovered. by the fish. However, I am in a bit of a poo-poo zone because I got lost. Okay. No more futzing around. I'm just going to get out of here. I would like to not die today. Thank you very much. Brimstone is here. Yeah, Dune is on my, um, to consume list for sure. I tried to watch the movie a few years back, but I was not in a very good headspace to do so at the time. Um, I want to finish the movie because I've heard that it's very good. Uh, would you recommend the books? I could read the books as well. Uh, these are pieces of quartz used to make glass and various things that require glass such as windows for your base though I can't build any windows yet here's some of those frost anemone parts I was talking about that's a brine wing quacking behind me I will eat a frost anemone heart which as you can see ow thank you symbiote ow um, gives you a little bit of health, a little, I mean, sorry, not health, it gives you a little bit of food and a little bit of water. Uh, that's a fish that's been frozen. Did you see that? The brine wing Warning. froze a fish and then ate it. Remaining. Dune is such an iconic series. And look, now I have a beacon for the Delta Station dock. Um, that's fantastic. I am going to head back to base before I go to Delta Station. I would like to empty out my inventory so that I don't miss any of the pickups at Delta Station because as you can imagine, there are quite a few of those there. Oh, a YouTuber book club. That sounds so fun. I've never actually participated in a book club before though I can see how they would be appealing everybody reads a book and then they all discuss it together it's very very cool maybe I should look into joining a book club though I often have problems with committing to long-term things of that nature that's pretty cool you can see the uh the tip of this plant sticking up out of the water. Okay, so the storage in here is almost full up. What I will do is I will build a deployable waterproof locker. Okay. So, unfortunately, I do have to bind this to a slot. We'll bind it to five. Um, Subnautica had, I, th I think it was 10. It was either 7 or 10 slots that you could bind items to. The sequel has only 5. I don't know why. That was one of the only decisions that I don't agree with in this game, having been changed. Um, but so yeah, this is just a little locker that floats. You can dump all your crap in it. Oh, I don't need to hang, hold on, hang on to these pustules. 
I'm gonna put some pustules away. Bop, 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 and a spinnerfish. Uh, I don't need to hold on to the silicone rubber. A flashlight I would need. I've got some water and I've got some nutrient blocks on me. Uh, a piece of quartz. Okay, I think I am ready to head over to Delta Base. Book clubs do help with motivation. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Uh, there's Delta Station Dock. I'm doing pretty well on battery, so I'm not too worried in that regard. I think we can make it to Delta Station pretty quick. And on the way, just looking down, we're going due south to Delta Station. We can just observe some of the really cool terrain that there is on the way. Uh-oh. That sounds like a distress call. Yeah. Transmission of unknown origin. Source of transmission depth calculated at approximately 200 meters. Yeah, uh, that sounded like an SOS if I've ever heard one. Uh... The signal is 200 meters down, which I do not at all have the capability of surviving at this time. So we'll have to get a little more stuff before we head down there. I noticed some fragments here. I'm going to scan these. These are fragments of a sea truck. A very important vehicle in this game. I'm also going to pick up that table coral because table coral is vital in making computer. Warning. Thirty Oops. seconds of oxygen remaining. Uh, uh, there's another part, but I do not want to chance my luck, so I'm just going to go up to the surface. Acquired. Okay, now I can dive back down and scan that. Okay, another sea truck fragment. I'll just get some titanium out of that. I felt like there was another piece around here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, just another sea truck fragment. I'll scan these for now. If it turns out that I don't need them, I can always drop the resources. Okay. This is a fun looking new biome. We got a rock puncher. The rock puncher is very cute. Those of you who are up on your marine biology might recognize the rock puncher as looking very similar to a mantis shrimp. This one is glitching. That's okay. We all make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and so that's one of those critters that I talked about. See him right there? Now, unfortunately for the game, I love animals more than I am afraid of dying. So, I'm going to play chicken with this guy. See if I can't scan him in the butt before he eats me. He is a Cryptosuchus. I got him. Oh, that's a sea truck fragment. I don't need that. And ah, out of the water. Out of the water, please. Whew. Okay. Yes, all the colors. Mantis shrimp are very pretty. Uh. Let me listen to some Brad, of these here logs. I'm not blaming you, but what do you mean it's gone? Where did it go? You found some trouble somewhere in the deep twisty bridges and decided to jettison modules? Yeah, I had to jettison a module. I got free, went back for it, it was just gone. And you think someone stole it? Or something. 
I didn't lose it, that's for sure. I'm careful with my tools. I'm sure you are, but you have to admit, there have been a lot of sea truck accidents, and they're rather expensive. You want to follow me on a few runs tomorrow? See what it's like? Conditions are way harsher than anything I ever imagined. I don't know if you could really understand it from inside your base. That won't be necessary. Thanks for your time. I'll write it up as an accident. Yes, that introduces the player to a few more characters. Um, that's another great improvement in Subnautica Below Zero. If you could get me a drink of water. Oop! Looks like we are thirsty, thirsty, thirsty <laughs> as we are swimming around in the deep blue sea. Nico has redeemed another drink of water, so that is exactly what I will be availing myself of at this moment. Folks at home, make sure that you drink something as well. I am almost, uh empty on my water there, uh, <laughs> I will probably have to do a refill pretty soon. So now that we are above water, we have to worry about temperature instead of oxygen. Ah jeez, these sea monkeys are gonna get me in trouble. This is the third shipment that those buggers have gotten their weird little hands into. Now we're running low on flares and I'm gonna have to search nearby nests for stolen cargo. They're lucky they're kinda cute. <laughs> Raccoons of the sea, those ones. Oh, this is. is a recorded message. If you can hear this, you're trespassing. If you know it's good for you, you'll get the hell out of here. Uh-oh. Well, I'm sorry, unidentified person. I don't really have a choice. I gotta figure out what happened to my sister. So now that we've come across these things, we can actually scan them. Now that we have a scanner, these are thermal lilies. And they will help save your freaking butt when you are running around out here on the land and have to worry about temperature. And here's some crystalline sulfur. We needed that in order to make one of our recipes. Uh, that is necessary to create the repair tool. You can see the base up ahead. Uh, where does the staircase lead? Horseshoe shrub! And the horseshoe shrub grows shrub nuts. Shrub nuts are a great source of health, food, and H2O. Uh, it looks like it's starting to snow. Gonna hurry my way up here to this base. Scan this honeycomb fungus on the way. Uh, the sun is setting too, which does not help for visibility. Oh, little baby one. Ooh, here's some technology. Looks like somebody had a little lab set up down here. I'll scan that mineral detector fragment. Some of the wildlife down here is very grabby. If I didn't know better, I'd say they're after my supplies. Well, that is very true. It's pretty much what the sea monkeys do. What's this? Ah, uh, I actually think that's where I came up on the island, so I'm gonna go back this way. Alright, looks like Nico redeemed another cheetah fact, but it seems like the RNG has spit out the same fact from earlier. Oh! Stop right there, Altera. You're out of bounds. I'm not with Altera. 
then your position is doubly precarious. What do you mean? If you're telling the truth, you're out of your mind. If you're lying, there'll be hell to pay. Wait! Who are you? Stay off my land. Who? That it does not look like a lady that you want to cross. The woman in the exosuit has been traced as far as my technology will allow. Thank you, it PDA. Would appear I'm far less alone on this planet than I had anticipated. So it would seem. Signal location <laughs> uploaded to PDA. Perfect. Habitat builder, that is exactly what we are going to need in order to build a base. This data box will show us how to make a battery charger. Very nice. Now I don't have to worry about making duplicate batteries anymore. It looks like something is popping. Ah, yes, I can scan this multi-purpose room. And Nico, feel free to request another cheetah fact, since the bot uh, gave you a duplicate there. Alright, so we are here in Delta Base. It's a little dark, but we'll see what we can see. Ooh, a map! Remember how I mentioned earlier that there are maps in this game? So yeah, here's a map. As you can see, it's not very descriptive because they do want to uh, encourage the player to explore. Um, but this shows where the main Altera facilities are. Um, if you know anything about Greek lettering, you will recognize this one is Delta. So we are here right now and we've got a whole bunch of other facilities to check out. We're at Delta Station. There's also the Phi Robotics Center. Outpost Zero, the Copper Mining Site, and the Omega Lab. So yeah, we've got our work cut out for handy. us. I should be able to find my way to Phi Robotics where Sam worked. Jukebox! Yes, this game has a jukebox, which was not something in the previous game. Uh, you can actually play music inside your bases right your now, which is very fun. For the last time, I'm not cheating. Then what's your theory? What's going on? If you ask me, Zeta's been blinking a lot. I think it's a tell. He does have a point there. It's allergies. Allergies? Oh, is something in bloom in this frozen sector? Thermal lilies. And if you gang up on me, <laughs> I swear you're all fired. <laughs> you're not even my boss. Oh, you're all so gullible. You're fighting each other. Meanwhile, look at Parvin. <laughs> Just look at him. What am I doing? I'm not doing anything. Let's just take this to a vote. All those who think Zeta's allergies are a bad case of alienitis, say intruder. Intruder. Uh, intruder. Intruder. Danny? Oh, I'm just an observer here. I'm going to use my pass. Is there some kind of scientist conspiracy going on here? Zeta, Sam, Danielle, you three are suddenly very aligned. Or, like I said, Parvin is cheating. I'm starting to wish I was cheating. So that's something very interesting. Uh, the play, the, the characters in this game are playing Alien Intruder, which uh, is a game where someone is an alien intruder and you need to figure out which person it is. Hmm, I wonder if that sounds similar to uh, any kind of popular game that is really common these days. Communications tower maintenance log. Another day, another slight by the winged furies. As usual, I got an interference alert. As usual, I went out to see what the problem was. As usual, it was frozen stalagmites of feathered bird excrement. I fear the career impact of saying this officially, if you can even call what I have a career. But I could swear they're targeting me personally. <sighs> The week I was out with the flu, I came back to find the tower spotless. Parvin laughed at me when I asked him how he cleaned it. Silly me, as if Parvin would ever clean anything. 
There's nothing left for me to do but quit. But I know that's what the birds want me to do. Oh, and I got the tower up and running. Maintenance complete. So, Jeremiah is under the impression that the birds are targeting him with his poop. Uh, yeah, system. That does sound, uh, hmm, pretty sus. <laughs> uh, so, another new feature in Subnautica Below Zero is that you have different types of beds. Uh, I just scanned beds from Fred and Jeremiah, which are, I mean, they're functionally the same. However, the player can have uh, different choices of how they want their bed to look in the game, which is really cool. And we did scan the name tags of Fred Lachance, the IT Courier and Maintenance Generalist, as well as Jeremiah Mergle, the Technician. So these are just a couple little bios of some of the characters that we are coming across in the game. I like how they do it now with the voice messages and the picture popping up on the screen. Jenny, you wouldn't believe the adventure I'm having. It's just like when we were kids, and we used to play underwater city. Only, sea monsters aren't pretend, and I don't need to hide behind you when one swims by. Because I'm safe in my sea truck. Safe and very, very brave. Please tell Dad for me. Thanks so much for the mustache, kid, by the way. To be honest, I wasn't sure if it was a gag gift at first. Personal grooming is something of a challenge here, and as you know, I'm a pretty low-maintenance guy to begin with. But you'd be surprised how handy mustache wax is in an emergency. There have been some close scrapes. For a while there, someone was sabotaging my truck, and I thought I was seeing things. But my friend Sam helped me sort it out. Although, she's had some troubles of her own lately. To be honest, I get a little worried out here sometimes. But I guess that's normal, under the circumstances. Gotta expect a little risk, right? I should be happy. I have great friends and a good paycheck. Anyway, love you, Jenny, and Dad. Please find a way to tell him that he won't find embarrassing. And don't worry, I'm looking for the perfect fish to bring back as a gift. Your favorite. <laughs> eh, poor dude. Fred is just trying really hard to be respected. So here we've got the bio of Emmanuel, the HR and communications liaison. He looks kind of jerky. Uh, and we've also scanned some great equipment in here, including the aquarium. Uh, fish can't breed in the aquarium, but you can keep them and they swim around and they look very cool. Good morning, Frostpack. Just a quick update to inform you of some oh, just key achievements quick. and priority shifts. We need you That's all to so get cool, behind. Huh? <laughs> the Spy Pangolin Project was a resounding success. Please join me in congratulating Samantha IU was now reassigned to Outpost Zero. That's Sam, my sister. Future initiatives. Congratulations are also in order for Daniel Valenti and her team at Omega Lab. The closing of Phi Robotics means important funds can be redirected to their Kara bacteria study, which has important positive implications for the life sciences. You're all doing an exceptional job, and I don't want to promise anything, but HQ has been taking notice. Can't scan the Keep food, the good unfortunately. Work. I think we can start discussing bonuses soon. Oh boy, we can Sam start really discussing bonuses. Skin. I didn't know she had it in her. And this is just a fun little executive toy, which you can actually end up building in this game. Anything you scan, any piece of technology you scan, you can build. Oh, real quick. Snowball fight! <laughs> yeah, you can throw snowballs. I mean, y it was kind of required for a game in which you run around on a snowy planet. You gotta, you gotta be able to throw snowballs at people. Yeah, the birds in this game are so sus. They're very sus. I don't know if they even count as birds. Tower maintenance log. Okay, this time the birds have really done it. 
I don't know what they've been eating, but it's corrosive when it comes out the other end. I'm gonna need to rewire. I'm short an element to fabricate the right cable. I remember seeing some when I did that dive to the old ship. I'm gonna go out there and see if I can get some more. That should fix it. Maintenance status? In progress. Hmm, okay. So not only does that do a little bit of world building, it does let us know that something is broken, we need to fix it, and it gives us a clue as to where to find that. What's this? Status report. Sector Zero region scan. Two active human life forms detected. Unauthorized habitat construction and vehicular activity detected. Oops, was that me? Recommendation. Observe, prepare for possible intervention. So, they mentioned finding two people. Obviously, one of them is me. The other seems to have been that mystery woman that we came across. Uh, here's a test override module port. We can't do anything with this yet. New employee training. It's recommended that all training be completed while tower is in test mode. Test mode is a fully functional simulated version of live mode. While in test mode, all communication from the tower, including distress signals, security alerts, and spy transmissions, will be disabled. To initiate test mode, you need to insert the test override module. So that's something that we are going to need to find. And I am going to need to find some warmth pretty soon, because I am freezing. Ah, there we go. A nice thermal lily. And I'm gonna try to scan the sky rays that are flying around. Because I like them. Sky ray, come back! Sky ray! Sky ray! So here's the part of the game where I just platform for 10 minutes and try to piecemeal scan the sky rays. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh no, I got stuck. Yeah, I'm not going to subject you all to that. I will get another opportunity to scan a sky ray. And thankfully, I don't need to manually scan the um, solar panels. The game already provided those for me. Uh, when I scanned the habitat builder, I believe. Here's Delta Station. I am going to check my beacons. I do have a beacon for Delta Station dock, which is good. Uh, yeah. I'll leave that on. Uh, I don't think I can make it down there without dying. So, let's just go through the caves. Nico says, if I were to have a fairground organ or concert organ, I would invite friends for a small recital concert. Yeah, that sounds like the type of thing that you would do with a fairground organ. Are fairground organs played any differently than like a regular organ or a piano? Ah, uh, here's something else. Here's a sulfur pool. Um, it is explained in the game that the suit that you're wearing protects you from being boiled by the sulfur. Uh, this is another way that the player can increase their body heat. I think it's kind of a cop-out. When I first saw those, I never touched them because it looks like something that would hurt you, right? Looks like something that would hurt you in a video game. But they wrote that in, I guess, so that the player didn't have to worry about getting injured while they were trying to warm up. Uh, and there's another beacon. I'm gonna leave that there, though. And there's the Cryptosuchus that was trying to chase me down before. Uh, I'm gonna
gonna check around here, make sure I have not forgotten anything. Mm, no, it doesn't look like it. Nico says about fairground organs, they're automatic despite being a hundred years, and the types of music that is played can vary from classical to modern music. Oh, that's pretty neat. It's nice that they're automatic so that you don't need to um, like learn how to play a musical instrument. How are the how are the songs? How is the music um, played? Do they have like cartridges or rolls or something like that? Ow! All right, time to head back to my drop pod. Mineral rich crevices detected below. Geothermal activity detected. Caution advised. I thought that was a new fish, but it was just a bladder fish lit in different light. This is a different mineral resource, though. Gold! Gold is very valuable in Subnautica. Just about as valuable as it is in real life. Though for different reasons, of course. You are not buying or selling anything in Subnautica, but gold is a necessity to craft certain higher level building materials. I'm gonna grab that lithium. Lithium is also a valuable material. Uh, just titanium in here. So <laughs> nice one! Yes! Van has redeemed the play of the game animation. I don't think we've actually seen that one on the stream so far, so props to you for that. Uh, that was me in my cosplay of D.Va from Overwatch. I no longer play Overwatch, but uh, when I did, I really, really enjoyed that game. Uh, and that was D.Va in her carbon fiber skin, which was my favorite because black and red are my favorite colors. Have a good night, Van. Thank you so much for stopping by the stream. As always, it's so nice to have you here. Um, I will be streaming again next week at the usual time in the usual place. So yeah, you can see me then and we will uh, be exploring more under the sea with Subnautica. Um, as of right now, I just noticed that it is just about 7.15 p.m. my local time. Uh, that means that I have been suiting for two and a quarter hours. I am about reaching my first suit limit for the day. Um, so since it'll be a nice round number, let's say we take a little break right now and we'll be back in 15 minutes. It's going to be 30 past the hour. So folks can uh, grab themselves a snack or a drink, use the bathroom, get up, stretch your legs, and we will be back very soon with some more Subnautica. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back.
Okay, folks. I appreciate your continued patience. Uh, I had to deal with a uh, housemate situation. I'm gonna grab myself some water and something to eat, and I will be right back really, really fast. Alright, 
Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your patience. I am back. I had to deal with a real-life situation really quick. Nothing to worry about. And I refilled my water. My fursuit is off and disinfecting. I took off my sweaty Under Armour. And I managed to grab a small snack. I'm just going to be eating a plum. I'm pretty hungry. Let me go ahead and get the timer up on the screen. Come on, Streamlabs. You know you wanna. Streamlabs. Oh my god, there it goes. Okay. Oh, what the heck? It takes so long to respond. Here we go. Okay. Got the fursuit timer up on the stream screen and two people left now that I've come back that's weird but okay <laughs> uh, people are messaging me what is the deal oh okay nothing important I don't think All right, hopefully I won't have to take any headache medication, but we'll see how it goes. Once I get some water and food in me, hopefully I'll start feeling a little bit better. Ah. Even when you're just, uh, you know, sitting at a computer, fursuiting takes a bit out of you. Alright. Yeah, those Cryptosuchus are being threatening, but... Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Okay. Onwards we go. As I grab as much silver ore as possible on the way. This is a very valuable resource. Oh, sorry. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. Uh, where did it go? Here we are. Thank you for letting me know. It's much appreciated when the viewers let the streamer know if something is amiss. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. I forget. Do I have the... Do I have the, um, the recipe for a sea truck? I'll go back down and, and check it out. Yes, a lot of the time we cannot tell that something is wrong until, you know, the viewers inform us because from our end of the stream, everything looks fine. Ah, uh, yeah. I did have it. Warning, passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Okay. I'm not going to spend too much time down here. I just want to poke my nose around, as it were. Oh, look at that. A PDA. Okay. 
Nothing new. Ooh, there's a base that I want to look at, but I've got to get up. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Yeah, you can let me know. Anyone can let me know. Everybody who's watching the stream, I rely on you folks to tell me when things are going well or if anything needs to be changed. I'm gonna eat this shrub nut. Grab that vital table coral sample. Now, there it is. Nice! High capacity O2 tank. That is definitely gonna come in handy. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. I'm gonna grab oxygen from this here oxygen plant so I don't have to go all the way back up to the surface. Right now, at least. A sea truck fragment I already have. Brad, great to see you. Come on in. You don't mind if I record this, do you? Uh, am I in trouble? <laughs> no. You know me. Just a fanatic for details. And my memory's not what it used to be. <laughs> I know what that's like. Huh. Yes. Is that why you've been running so many personal errands for your colleagues? We asked you to limit them. Oh, I don't like uh, a manual. So I am in trouble. That's not how I want you to look at it. Oh my god. Here's what I see. You're a team player. You want to get the job done. Well, I think I have a pretty good record there. You want people to like you. Has anyone complained? Fred, the trouble is, not everyone is as reliable as you are. Sometimes people need help being where they need to be and concentrating on their work. All the trips were work-related. It appears you transported tech for Lil, rather far out from her base. Lil needed to go deep, and she needed a sea truck. Her work is currently on surface installations. She shouldn't be anywhere near the water. I, uh, well, I... No more favors to friends, agreed? Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, I keep telling you. Call me Manu. <laughs> Manu a Manu. Yeah, not a fan of Emmanuel. Not a fan of him. Uh, Nico is wanting to make roti alfredo with garlic bread. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. I say to go for it. Rotini is not typically a pasta that Alfredo is made with. So innovating and experimenting in the kitchen is really, really fun. I'm gonna make some glass. Mm, I can make a repair tool actually. I have silicone, I have a piece of silicone rubber in here. Yep, there it is. Build that repair tool. There it is. Oh, and I don't need the compass anymore. Huzzah! Now, the other thing that I wanted to make was a habitat builder. Well, there, no. Oh my god, game. Can you. Thank you. Anyway, as I was saying, I want to pin the Habitat Builder recipe. And I am also going to want... Oh, you hear that? It's raining outside. Uh, environmental weather was added in this game as well. I just saw something that I needed to... I needed glass to make. What was it? Oh, there's a sea truck upgrade. Not very helpful to me, who does not yet have a sea truck. Um, oh, right! O2 tank. I wanted to make a high-capacity O2 tank, for which we will need the standard O2 tank that I got on me, four titanium and two glass. Uh, I just need another piece of quartz to make glass with.
Oh, yep, and as the bot just informed you, if you would like to get me some food to help keep the stream going, you are more than welcome to do so. I've got my treat stream page right there. I should be all set up for folks. Okay, glass obtained, O2 tank is on me, and I just need one more piece of titanium. So I'm just gonna move my sea glide over here for now because I need to take off the O2 tank. Ah, uh, it looks like it requires more slots than I actually have available. Let me drop some silver in here. Hopefully that's enough. Here we go. And now let's go ahead and make that expanded O2 tank. Ugh, now I need the silver I put away. One piece of it should do. Huzzah! And that's automatically applied to me. Perfect. So now I can breathe a lot longer underwater. Uh, yeah, I can drink large filtered. I'm gonna go, gonna go ahead and do that. Ooh, what have I got in here? Okay, so at this stage in the game, we've pretty much got everything that we will be needing to make a base. David, you'll be happy to know the Frost Pack is making excellent progress. I must say, my management style appears to be uniquely well-suited to isolated planets. I miss you, of course, but I wonder if you feel it too. As great as we are together, we're almost better apart. Just look at how well Prosperina did in her last show. I'm sorry I couldn't be there to see it, but I'm sure if I'd been around, I'd only have made her nervous. Once this mission is over, I'll come home for a few good months, and then... What do you think if we look at reorganizing our expectations to facilitate longer-term separation success? I really think this could be a great model for us going forward, romantically and otherwise. Don't forget, I love you from the depths of my heart. Keep on succeeding in your projects. You know there's nothing I find more attractive. Oh my god, David, so David sounds like, or sorry. Emmanuel sounds like such a douche. That was him. Uh, if you read between the lines, he was basically telling his partner that he prefers to spend time away from him. And he was like, uh, for example, just look at how well our daughter did during her recital when I wasn't there. This is proof that we should just spend as much time apart as possible. Keep being successful. There's nothing I find more attractive. Ugh, it's like, how douchey do you have to get? Uh, why do I have a symbiote on me? Yeah, let's put the sea glide back on there. So what I'm doing right now is scouting out a location to build a base. We want somewhere that's not too far away. Alright, looks like Nico has redeemed posture check, which means that we've all got to stop and stretch because it's important to do so when we are spending a bunch of time sitting down at the computer. So, everybody get up with me. Stretch all the way up to the sky. Uh, let me make sure my headset is on and reach down. Touch your toes. Feel that stretch in your hamstrings. A twist to the left. Ah, twist to the right. Ooh, my spine always hates it when I do this. And bend over. And bend 
ending to the other side. Roll your shoulders a little bit. Roll your neck a little bit. And good to go. Okay. Mm, bear with me one second. Music in this game is so nice, too. And I haven't even shown you the audio clips um, and the music clips that you get for your... Uh, jukebox. Those are very fun. So when you're building a base in Subnautica, um, in Below Zero you can actually build a land base or a sea base. I prefer to have a sea base, just because it's more fun. And also it'll be more useful to the player. Uh, when you are choosing a location to build your base, you generally want to make sure that there is a lot of space around to attach the rooms. Subnautica can be pretty funky uh, when it comes to the base building. You also want to make sure that there is depth as certain room modules that you will end up building and attaching to your base require some space around them. Oh. Very quickly, I just want to show you. Oop. Look, everybody. It's penguins. And what is that? It's a pengling. A baby penguin. Uh, you can pick up the penguins, however, that makes their parents very upset and they will attack you. So I'm not going to do it. Uh-oh. It looks like this arctic peeper has gotten stuck. Oh, there's another arctic peep. Oh my god, look, that penguin is trying to eat the arctic peeper that got stuck on top of the ice. Look. Yeah, see? It swam away. That's so funny. Okay. This might not be a bad uh, location for base building. I just want to pick an area where these twisty bridges chunks won't cause too much of a problem. Now come on, come all to this tragic affair. Oh my god, it is Redeem City going on here in the chat. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, when I'm in the fursuit, nobody redeems the special stuff. And then when I'm not in the suit, everyone's like, tell me a story. Get up and stretch. It's so funny how things work out. Um, so Nico has just redeemed story time. Which means I have to tell you a true story about something that happened to me at a furry con or a furry event that happened in the past. That was also a good opportunity to see. Uh, Nico, do you have any preferences for what kind of story you want to hear? spot looks pretty good though I belatedly realized that I don't actually have a habitat builder on me so I do need to return to the drop pod and make a habitat builder which I can then use to build the habitat itself Wait, why am I in here?
Mm, okay, it's under tools, right. Habitat builder. Oh, I had it pinned. I need a battery, a wiring kit, and a computer chip. So let's see. Wiring kit. Need two silver ore for that. Ugh, I think I just had one. Put that lithium away and grab the other piece of silver. Ah, it's the high capacity O2 tank I don't need anymore. And I also need a computer chip, which needs two table coral sample, gold, and copper wire. Can you see now why I grabbed the table coral when I had it? Uh, hmm. I might actually be low on copper. Though, I think I've got some copper outside. In my locker. No, no I don't want to change the name. Ah, shoot. No copper in here. I'm gonna have to go swimming for it. Nico says, memorable convention weekend. The trip that is the most memorable to you. Let me just turn down the volume really quickly. I have my volume cranked when I am in fursuit because I need that to be able to hear. And then once I have the fursuit head off, uh, the sound is a lot less muffled. Uh, let's see, memorable convention weekend, the trip that was the most memorable to me, I would say um, the last Anthrocon that I attended, which was Anthrocon 2019. That was a very special and very memorable convention weekend for me. Um, I got to spend it with my partner and we had a very special time. That was uh, the most memorable uh, con weekend so far. Uh, we, whenever we travel to Anthrocon, we always go down a day in advance so that we have time to get situated. We live very far away from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so the travel itself takes up an entire day of our time. So in order to not uh, miss any of the convention events that are going on, we book a day going down and a day coming back that are solely just for transportation. We don't do anything else. We are just traveling all day long. Um, and then we had a day before Anthrocon began. Anthrocon technically, oh my god, titanium when I wanted copper. Uh, Anthrocon events begin on Thursday evening, technically, uh, though during the day on Thursday there isn't very much convention-wise going on other than picking up your badges if you were pre-registered. So we tend to use that day for sightseeing and other extracurriculars. In Anthrocon 2019, we um, had breakfast at a cat cafe, which is local to Anthrocon, just a couple blocks away. They are called the Colony Cat Cafe, uh, which was so much fun. We also went to the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium, which is a fantastic um, natural resource place to go. If you enjoy animals, we can spend all day there, even out in the hot sun. It was very well worth it. Um, they also have an aquarium so that if it gets too warm, you can pop inside. It's temperature controlled. You get to look at a bunch of fish. Uh, it was just like Subnautica. It would be greatly enhanced with the construction of an underwater vehicle. Thank you, PDA. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it's just like Subnautica. We got to pet rays, which was so much fun. If you have ever had uh, the opportunity to touch rays in a touch tank, they are so cool. It's they're the most like breathtaking undersea creatures. You, you can't even imagine. And getting to pet them, they're, they're just so sweet and they're so soft. Um, so we did that. And also uh, that year on Thursday, that was July 4th, which in America is a holiday for which there are usually a lot of firework shows. There was one going right out over the river 
behind Anthrocon. We headed out there on the waterfront. We watched the fireworks and we spent a very memorable night together. So that was one of the most memorable convention trips that I've had so far. I am greatly looking forward to, um, you know, people being safe, everybody getting vaccinated so that we can return to having in-person events and we can begin uh, going back to these events that mean so much to people for our, uh, you know, our community to connect. Two ribbon, ribbon plants and a copper ore. I've got ribbon plants in here, I think. Or I may have already used them. I think I already used them. All right, not to worry. Let me put some of these non-consumables in here, like the posters and stuff that I picked up from the base. And we are gonna get, let me just pin the battery recipe so I don't forget what I need. Two ribbon plants and a copper ore. Shouldn't be too hard. I think there are ribbon plants pretty close to the drop pod. In Subnautica Below Zero, every player starts out in the same location. In Subnautica, the original game, the area where you begin is actually randomized. So you may end up starting off in a different location than a friend of yours who played the game. It mixes it up and makes it a little more exciting. Though you do always start off in the safe shallows. The game is not going to spawn you in a dangerous location full of uh, deadly animals to start with. Okay, there's the copper. Now I need to try and remember where there are ribbon plants. Here's some ribbon plants. One, two. Another sea glide fragment. Ah, uh, sure, I'll scan it. Why not? Nico says it's really cool that you and your partner share memorable moments together. I mean, that's kind of the purpose of having a partner. <laughs> you would hope that uh, your romantic significant other is somebody that you enjoy spending time with and making memories with. It's so funny whenever I, you know. Like when couples refer to their spouses, you know, the old ball and chain, or like, oh man, I wish I could do whatever, or blah blah blah, but my wife won't let me, she's such a bitch. And it's like, why did you even get married if you can't stand each other? It makes no sense to me. It's something that you see a lot with the, you know, stereotypical, uh straight couple, especially in American media, it's always like the husband and the wife are at odds with each other. Something you also see frequently is like those wedding cake toppers that say game over and it's like the the wife piece is dragging the husband piece away or something like that. Uh, I just don't get why people can have such open flagrant disregard for their spouse like if you hate the person don't be in a relationship with them it makes no sense so the fact that someone can be like it's nice that you and your partner can be happy together it's like that should that should be a given that should be a granted we shouldn't have to commend stuff like being civil to someone you supposedly love I just find it very strange is all. Okay, do I have, whoops, that's the storage. This is the fabricator. Can I fabricate a battery? I sure can. I no longer need that. I can make a habitat builder. Yes. Adding emergency shelter blueprints to your databank. All right. With the builder tool, you can construct sea bases from raw materials, advising against exploring a frozen water continent without a base. No bed, no storage, no place to put a fabricator module. No fun. No fun indeed. 
All right, awesome. I'm gonna equip the habitat builder in my slot five. It's nighttime now. How am I doing on sustenance? I could use a little food. So I think what I'm gonna do is cure some peepers. It looks like I've put all my salt outside. So let me head out. <gasps> System, you got to swim with rays? That's so cool. System says, I got to swim with rays a couple years back. My family and I went to Discovery Cove a couple years back, which has a big snorkeling area with fish and rays, which was fun. Oh my god. What a fun and exciting opportunity. I would love to swim with rays. I hope you were able to take pictures, though I don't know if you could take pictures while being in the water, but still. Swimming with rays. Oh, what an amazing experience. I can't imagine how much a trip like that would cost, though. I'm sure Mika would love to go swimming with rays. Alright, I'm gonna cure a couple arctic peepers. I'm gonna make for good food on the go. You see that? I give a nice plus 32 to food. I will eat one of those right now. Tasty. And drink a little bit of water. I still have a symbiote on me, which I have no idea how I picked that up. It might have been an accident. I'm going to put the symbiote away. And yeah, I don't need to carry a random other piece of salt crystal. Discovery Cove. Where is that located? system. Nico hasn't been to an aquarium since a family vacation a long time ago. Aquariums are very fun to visit. They're also nice uh, any weather. Uh, experiences. If you go to a zoo, sometimes you have to worry about it being closed if it's raining, or if the weather is too hot or cold, certain animals might not be out. Uh, if you go to an aquarium, they're almost always indoors that I know of, so they can be attended rain or shine. Aquariums are so much fun. You get to learn about animals. It's great. Hmm. This ice flow here is a little too tall for me to build a base on. I want a nice area that's not blocked off. Like these, these uh, plants or corals, whatever they are, these things right here, those will block portions of the base, and you cannot do terraforming in Subnautica. So you need to carefully plan out where you're putting your base. Uh, Multi-purpose room is going to be the first thing that I make, pretty much. And so I want to make sure that whatever I put down is going to be... In a space where I can add more rooms to it. Just popping my head above the water to grab some air. Uh, there are also different rooms. Like, see, if I built it here, that'd be cool, but then I can't build anything around it due to those twisty bridges. So, we'll have to keep looking for a suitable base location. Yeah, you'd have to get a special underwater camera to take pictures. Makes sense. Oh, and you also got to swim with dolphins. How fun that must have been. Okay, let's pull out the sea glide so that we can speed it up a little bit. Oh, I think my sea glide is about to run out of power. I should keep an eye on that. 
when I build my bases, I prefer to keep them near the surface just because I like to see the sunlight and you can also utilize solar power to power your bases. As you progress up, oh, yep, there goes the sea glide. I'm gonna have to recharge its battery soon. Um, as you progress throughout the game, you gain the ability to use different power sources for your base, such as nuclear or bioreactor. Um, so you can build bases that are deeper down. Yeah, this is not a good spot. I won't be able to put many rooms over here. I can't remember where I put my base the first time I played, though I do know it was pretty close to the starting thing. I might actually... the battery out of my flashlight which I'm not using and pop it into the sea glide as you have just seen me do Nico are you leaving us I tighten whole fish. Oxygen. Yeah, you don't get very much oxygen from the whole fish. Breathing from a whole fish is kind of just like a, a last ditch effort that keeps the player from drowning. You're gonna wanna stick your head above water. Okay, yeah, it looks like Nico is leaving. I'm gonna say bye. Thank you for coming by the stream. Hopefully, I'll still be streaming if you decide to come back later, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I am going to try to at least get a basic base set up before the evening is over. In a base, you can be a lot more comfortable. You can also set up Things like lockers, desks, a bed, um, as well as tanks for the fish. You can set up module fabricators so that you can build stuff without having to go back to the little, uh, the little drop pod. Okay, I don't want to be too close to the ice because that will hinder my base building as well. This area I think would be good, though will it let me build stuff over this twisty bridge? No, it won't. Eh, burp, 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 burp. Also, it wouldn't let me build it inside this here creep vine. As you can see, I take base building very seriously. <laughs> I don't wanna, you know, you, you can build multiple bases in the game. You're not at all restricted to one location. Uh, I know a lot of other people who play Subnautica, um, they'll make like, a simple base for their first one and then they'll build other bases that are located in different areas around the map especially when the player starts exploring more and they get into certain biomes that there are valuable resources in which you will need to be returning to and like farming those resources but I have not found myself needing to do that as I played I prefer to build just one base and have it be like my house Though, I might do things differently this time. Who knows? We'll see. Is that a... Yeah, that's a sea glide fragment. I don't need a sea glide fragment, thank you. As you can imagine, since I'm staying in the same area, the 
fragments that I am encountering are repetitious, I'm going to need to start exploring out more if I want to try to find different technologies. And no, you can't move the drop pod. The drop pod stays where it was. Might have to go out from the twisty bridges zone a little bit if I want to find a flatter area. And I won't want to be heading north because north has a lot of ice flows. It's good to have a base on the border of the kelp forest, or creepvine forest, I guess it would be in this game. Hmm. Spot here might not be so bad. Oh, look at that! I haven't been here before. Beacon fragment? Sure, I'll scan that. Ah, first aid kit. Very useful. Some water. Usually there's more technology around here. Is there any technology? Any PDAs or things that I missed? Mm, no. Doesn't look like it. I think that might have been indicating somewhere that I could dive down deeper. That's another sea glide piece. It's fun to explore these caves. Oh look, a sea monkey nest. What's in this one? Oh, just a sea glide fragment. I'll take the titanium though. I will need that in just a moment as I start to build my base. Oh, okay. It looks like the ocean might be opening up here a little more. What's this? What is this? So it seems like I was looking in the wrong direction. I was looking down when I should have been looking up. Uh, that looks like a live wire. I'm not going to touch that. I don't know how I'm still swimming in the water without having been electrocuted by that. It's, I mean, we're in the water and it's a live wire. I'm not going to question the game logic. Let's find a good way to get out of the water and onto this platform. Oh, look, a ladder. Mineral detector fragment, that's cool. Ah, uh, yes, Discovery Cove is in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, right by Disney. <laughs> Be wary of the lazy river. It is in no way lazy. Oof, good to know. Uh, there's a flare in there, but I don't need it, really. I can eat, or I can drink some water. And, yeah, I'll eat a nutrient block. Oh, look, another nutrient block. <laughs> Uh, hmm. A little surprising that there isn't more technology up here that I can grab, but oh well. There's that piece of titanium I jettisoned. There are the penguins and penguins panging around. They're so cute to watch. Hypothermia imminent. Uh, well, I can't spend very much time watching them because I need to make sure that I don't freeze to death. Uh, I would build the base over here, but these holes are gonna make a problem. Eh, might not be so bad. Might not be so bad. 
sure. Let me just, and it'll, you know, you can't beat the views either. Yeah, that should be fine. So I'm gonna put my first base piece right here. Hang on. I thought I heard something trying to eat me. Okay. Now what you need to do is you need to build a hatch so that you can get in. Uh, I am going to build the base outwards so the hatch will go on this end of it. And I can go inside. Warning. Emergency power only. Oxygen production offline. So the base doesn't produce oxygen until you've gotten it powered. Speaking of oxygen, I'm going to grab myself a breath of fresh air. And now I am going to build an exterior module, a solar panel. So we need two pieces of quartz to make that, which we don't have. It's time to go swimming around and looking for some quartz. Uh, I'll also scan this sea glide fragment because, as you know, that titanium is going to come in quite handy. Oh, also, I will... Please tell me I left the beacon on me. I did leave the beacon on me. I am so smart. Oh. Ta-da! So now I have a beacon. And I can even change the color of that in my beacon manager. I'm gonna make it green. So now when I'm swimming around, I will know where my home base is. Looks like the sun is setting. Time to find some quartz. Or I can just swim on back because I know I've got a lot of quartz there. Actually, I think that might be prudent. So I am gonna squeeze myself into the base real quick. And I am gonna build a locker. Ah, needs quartz to build a locker too. Well, I can start the blueprints for them anyway. And on this wall, I'm going to start the blueprint for a... Oh, I can't build a fabricator yet, huh? It's... Oh, no, I can. There it is. Um, on this wall, I'm going to put my fabricator. And I'm going to put my battery charger. Modification station we don't need until later. So now that I've placed those blueprints, let's head back to the drop pod. Hiya, Jackie. Welcome to the stream. I don't know that I've seen you here before, so thank you very much for stopping by. Right now, I am not in fursuit. I fursuited for 2 hours and 15 minutes earlier on this stream today, as the counter up at the top of the stream can tell you. Right now, I'm playing Subnautica Below Zero, which is a first-person survival adventure game by Unknown Worlds Entertainment which takes place on a frozen alien planet. It's very fun. If you want to know more information about the game that I'm playing, you can type exclamation point game in the chat, like so. And that will tell you more about the game that I'm playing as well as how you can help select the games that I play in the future. 
And Metal Ice Morningstar is here as well. Saying hello, meow, as usual. Oh, I didn't mean to save it, but you know what? That's fine. It's just a force of habit. When I have the menu open, I just click and I save the game. I'm going to grab the resources out of my floating locker first. There's all the quartz and a bunch of titanium. I'll put the salt back because I don't really need that right now. And look at that. There's my home beacon. I know exactly where it is. So for anyone who may be new to the stream, you can earn per points simply by watching as well as being active in the chat. And you can use those per points to redeem for all sorts of cool, fun, and exciting things. You can make stuff pop up on the screen. You can make me do crazy things. You can type exclamation point commands to see all of the fun commands that you can do in the chat as well as exclamation point store to redeem your points. Eh, looks like I am a little low on copper ore, so it'll be a while yet before this space gets finished. However, I can finish building the lockers at least. Or maybe I want to focus on... Yeah, I still don't have enough quartz to make that. Well, at least we've got lockers that I can start moving all my stuff over into. Like this crystalline sulfur and table coral, which I won't need as pressingly as some of the other resources. And yeah, I got a lot of uh, fun and exciting commands here on the stream. You can type exclamation point fact if you would like to learn a fun fact about cheetahs, for instance. And if you just want to hang out and kick back and relax, that is okay too. You can type exclamation point lurk in the chat. And we know that you just want to hang out and lurk for a little bit of a while, which is a-okay to me. A lot of folks say that they have my stream on in the background while they are doing other things because they just like listening to my voice, which is really cool. Especially when I'm not in fursuit. When I'm in fursuit, I would hope that everybody is looking at the screen. <laughs> I should imagine that they are. I can take a little bit back with me, honestly. Let's take... Let's start taking some of these things. Okay. Now, did I get... Uh, it doesn't look like I actually had any copper stored. So I'm going to need to grab some when I finish emptying out my inventory. So, how has your Saturday been going, Metal and or Jackie? Since this is one of the initial times that either of you has been interacting with me during the stream, I'm always eager and excited to know how it is that you found out about my channel or my streams. I always assume that everyone who's watching me is familiar with me uh, in some regard, but I know that that might not actually be the case. Uh, I'm gonna leave this as like a resource locker, and in this locker I'm gonna start putting the extraneous stuff, maybe some of these here, nutrient blocks, secured peeper, a couple first aid kits, that kind of thing. Uh, that empty battery, which there is no purpose in me holding onto right now, because I don't have a battery charger to charge it with. Here's a piece of copper. Just what we needed. 
Here we go. Welcome aboard, Captain. All primary systems online. Awesome. And here we go. I've got a fabricator right here. No need to run all the way back to the drop pod just to build stuff. Fantastic. So for this battery charger, I'm going to need a wiring kit, copper wire, and titanium. So let's go ahead and pin... Oh, I don't need that anymore. Let's go ahead and build, uh, pin the resources for that. I'm going to need a wiring kit and copper wire. Do I have any silver? Well, if I do, it's not here. I'm going to run back to the drop pod and move over as many of my existing resources as possible. Metal Ice says, it's going pretty good than usual since it takes time to record on my phone and your day is? Ah, uh, my day is going pretty okay. Um, I've been streaming for most of the day, which is usually what I do here on Saturdays. I start streaming at 5 p.m. Eastern. Previously to this, I was playing a game called The Outer Worlds. I did that for 10 weekends straight. And now I have decided to move on to Subnautica Below Zero, which is a very enjoyable game that I'm so excited to share with everybody here. If at all you would like to catch up on things that you might miss, uh, be aware that all of my streams are recorded and when I'm done streaming, those will all go up on my YouTube channel, so nobody ever needs to feel bad about missing anything. Or if you want to just go back and see what's been going on in my previous streams, you're more than welcome. I always give a little bit of a recap at the beginning of each of my streams, just to let folks who may have uh, missed the previous episode know what's been going on. Um, Subnautica Below Zero is not as lot focused as a game like The Outer Worlds, which is very much an exploration game. Though there is a plot in this game and you do need to worry about, uh, you know, completing the storyline. That is something that the player does need to focus on. It is not an open-ended game. There is a win condition. I don't need these fish. I'll put them in there, and I don't need that battery. So, silver. Silver. I've got lithium. No silver, though. And, of course, no copper. So, I'm going to have to look for some copper as well as silver. but we're gonna need more than that as well as a little bit of silver do you see why I built my base on the uh, the edges of the creep vine forest it is a lush environment with a lot of the necessary resources even fancy stuff like that there lithium I don't believe I have a recipe yet for anything that needs lithium but rest assured that is going Warning. to Boxing 100 meters. be useful efficiency in the future. Thank you, lady. Oh, something's trying to eat me. That's a new fish! I would love to scan it, but it is trying to eat me, and I am low on oxygen. So I'm going to come up to the surface and breathe before I get down there and see, see what it was. Intake. Do I have water on me? Oof, I don't. And a peeper won't help. Uh, let 
me head back home and grab some bladder fish on the way. That will help me with my liquid problem. And if there aren't any bladder fish, I know I've got some bottles of water in one of my lockers. Not this one. Not that one either. Ooh, did I drink all my water? That's no good. Oof. Well, I'm gonna have to find a bladder fish. Look, a bladder fish. So now we'll just head on over to the fabricator and use that bladder fish to filter out some water. Metal says, I heard there's a really big creature that's covered in ice below ground. Maybe. I mean, I've already played the game, so I know what Vital there is, signs but stabilizing. other people who may not have played Subnautica, it will be a mystery. We'll have to see. We did hear a voice message from Sam, who said that they were studying a frozen leviathan that was infected with the Kara bacteria. So, it could very well be true, or it could just be a myth, who knows? We'll have to find out as we continue to play the game. This one's got a mobile vehicle bay fragment in it. I've already scanned that, but I can always use it to get the titanium piece of salt. Don't really need that right now. I'm trying to explore while also being cognizant of my oxygen level. Oh, I hear a crash fish! Did I manage to scan it? I don't think so. Dang. It's so hard to get those crash fish before they blow up. They, as you can see, they do a little bit of damage to you. Not too much. Oh! Okay. <laughs> that one did a little more damage. And they live here in these sulfur plants. Which do grow crystalline sulfur. So that's another method of getting that resource. It's so nice to have that uh, expanded O2 tank. I don't need to worry so much. And I hear that squid shark. It looks like it just ate a fish, so maybe it's not too hungry. Maybe I can sneak up behind it. And we'll, go, we'll just play ring around the rosy with the brood shark, and now we will swim away, swim away. <laughs> Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Yes, I know I need oxygen. That's exactly why I was headed towards the oxygen plant. Metal says, it's pretty much good. This dehydrated in the summer, even though it's one of the four seasons. Uh, yes, summer can be very hot and Warning. dehydrating. 30 seconds of oxygen it's remaining. important to remain, uh hydrated and make sure that you are drinking water mm, that's another mobile vehicle be fragment oop I need air badly oh I might have hecked myself uh oh uh, phew by the skin of my teeth I'm gonna save. <laughs> I just uh, barely avoided suffocating right there. That would not have been good because I can't remember the last time that I saved. Is my inventory full? Yeah, okay. Let's head back. Why am I holding creep vine cluster? I should put that in one of my lockers. Yes, and I even have a redeem in my chat. Uh, exclamation point redeem drink you can redeem that for your per points if you want to make me and everybody else watching take a nice big sip of water or tea or soda or lemonade or whatever the heck 
all of you watching at home happen to be drinking while you're watching me stream. And I always ask folks at home what they're drinking when somebody redeems that. All right, let's blop some of this titanium in here. This is just gonna be building materials. I'll put the creep vine in here for now since it's so big and it takes up so much space. I'm gonna use another bladder fish to make some water. Mm, and I should use one of my first aid kits. You don't regenerate health in this game, so you do need to use a first aid kit when you get hurt. And unfortunately, with these pieces, there is a certain order that the resources need to go in. So like, even though I have titanium on me, I can't put that titanium into the battery charger until I make the wiring kit. I do have the wiring kit. I do have the copper wire. And I should have enough titanium. If not, I can just grab it. Yep, I did. Nice, now I've got a battery charger. So let's take these depleted batteries. And it can charge up to four batteries at once. And my sea glide is about to run out of battery, so I'm gonna actually eject the battery from that. And put that into charge. Battery. Now the power level on the base is pretty low. So I'd like to build some more solar panels to boost that. Okay, as you can see, I'm running out of the resources needed to make them. It is mostly quartz that I need. So let's go inside and see if I have any quartz. Welcome aboard, Captain. Metal Ice Morningstar says, Tiger wolves have the ability to see in the dark. Unfortunately, everyone gets in the dark, but I don't know since I'm part werewolf. That's pretty cool. I am not a cheetah, though I play one on TV. <laughs> I like to say that a lot. Looks like we are going to be exploring for more quartz. And yeah, unfortunately, so now we get into the part of the game where... Seek fluid intake. Ugh, I need more water, huh? Well, let me bladder fish it up. So this is the part of the game, once you've built a base, where you just kind of are running around gathering materials for a long time so that you can build everything that you need. I felt like I had more water. Maybe I don't. It might be back at the base. At the drop pod. I might have to go back to the drop pod. Oh, I just realized that I was swimming around with my uh, sea glide that has no battery in it. I'm such a doofus. It's going to take a little bit of a while to get over here, but it won't be too bad. Nice leisurely swim. And I can look for resources on the way. I guess I can have my knife out since there's no point holding the sea glide if it's got no battery in it. Here's some quartz. I think I see more quartz down there. Yep, there it is. I 
This is a tiny little cave. There isn't much in here, but on the other hand, it's a lot harder for you to get lost. I am going to want to make sure that I don't get down too deep because I don't have the sea glide to quickly get me out of danger. No lead in that, just titanium. It's a very atmospheric game. It's nice here in the twisty bridges because these, uh, these coral tentacles produce light and it's very pretty. Now this should be empty. Now it's empty, for certain. And I didn't have water, but I do have some stuff that I want to bring back. Uh, I'm gonna leave a couple flares here, actually. Picked up what sounds like a distress call. Who or what is out here calling for help? Didn't sound human. Maybe it's from a remnant of architect technology. In her message, Sam's colleague did say there was something important here. Even if it's just a mimic from one of the more intelligent aquatic specimens, that could be a major find. It or could. if it's from Altera, it could have bearing on what happened to Sam. I should definitely check it out. Ooh, look at all this quartz down here. Yes, we'll definitely be checking that out as soon as able. However, the distress signal was 200 meters down, as the PDA so helpfully informed us. And we don't yet have the capability to dive so deep. Pick up some ribbon plant. Uh, I don't want to go in that cave. What was that woman's problem? The one in the exosuit. Like I need to say which woman. And what the hell is she doing on this planet? It isn't exactly a happening vacation spot. She knew their terrain well enough to make a dramatic entrance by jumping off a sheer cliff. So I guess she's been here a while. But how long has she been following me? She said to keep away from her or off her land. What in this frozen slush bog could she be protecting? Unless she's camped out somewhere. She's definitely heard of Altera, though. Did she meet Sam? A lot of mysteries that we have to figure out. And we will in time. Now let me go ahead and try to fix up some of these uh, rooftop solar panels. <laughs> They're not exactly even, but that's okay. Yay, solar panels! So now look at that! The base can have up to 300 power. Though the power is low right now because I only just added the extra solar panels. It was previously operating only on one. And it is nighttime right now. As you can see, it's pretty dark outside. So there isn't very much sun. making some filtered water from these bladder fish. And the power, as you can see, is being used to charge those batteries. Yeah, nice. Um, I'm gonna put away this nutrient block and instead I'm gonna eat this cured peeper that I brought with me. Mm. 
I'm also going to store these rotten plant parts, which again, I mentioned that I'm just keeping so that I can use them for crafting. Don't need sulfur. Oh, actually, I have my sulfur in over there, so let's take these back. As I do want to try to maintain a little bit of order. Uh, let's see. I'll take back the quartz and the copper ore, as those do appear to be most useful right now. Crystalline sulfur, lithium, and salt deposits I'm not using at the mo. Take back a bit more titanium. And yeah, uh, Metal has never played Subnautica Below Zero. Yeah, it's a really great game and I do recommend it. Um, if you find yourself wanting to play it, there is a previous game in the series, Subnautica, that came out a few years back. Um, you can play that if you want to, however, I don't think you need to play it in order to understand what's going on in Below Zero. Definitely, it gives a lot more background into what's going on with the plot, but Below Zero does a good enough job of uh, informing the player of what's going on, so you can absolutely play this game without having played the prequel to it. Uh, the batteries are not fully charged yet, but they're close enough, and I do need something to put in my sea glide as well as my scanner. So I'm just gonna grab these. Uh, I'm gonna... What? What did I have in there? Survival knife, scanner, sea glide. And something instead of the habitat builder. Oh, right, my flashlight. I'm gonna bind that to four. So now we're gonna put a battery back in here. And I'm gonna switch out this battery to this. And for this one, I'm actually gonna put this battery in it because I don't really use the flashlight all that much. I should probably build an extra battery, huh? I think we'll be doing okay for now. All right, so. We've got a little base situated here. <coughs> no crash fish in that one. Warning, passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Well, I appreciate you letting me know. Oh, that is a crash fish coming after me. Just grabbed another little piece of quartz and some lead. Don't solar panels need sunlight to work? Somehow I don't think it would work underwater. They do need sunlight to work. Um, that's why I build a base up close to the surface because it's close enough that the light, as you can see, shines in to reach the solar panel. Um, the player can build bases down deep, like all the way down there, but you would need to use different resources in order to get power. Um, like later on in the game, Welcome aboard, as you get more technology, you can make things like a, um, a bioreactor and even a nuclear reactor that you can create power using. Um, you can also set up uh, some kind of, I don't have the recipe yet, but you can set up some kind of uh, like cable system that can bring solar power from the surface all the way down to a deeper base. Uh, but I think this is going to be a pretty solid place to leave off the game right now. So I am going to go ahead and call it for the night. I appreciate everybody who has stopped by and watched me play the game. I love Subnautica. It's really fun. And um, I totally plan to keep streaming this game next Saturday as well. Uh, my streams always start at 5 o'clock Eastern. If uh, anything changes between now and then, I will make sure to let you all know. 
Um, you can follow me on my social media. Twitter is the best place to get in contact with me. I'm always posting about what I am doing there. And I post uh, reminders a day before the stream starts and when the stream itself is actually beginning. So that's the best place for me to uh, be followed by you if you want to keep up to date with everything that is going on with me. Um, so yeah, thank you all for coming down with me under the sea. I can't wait to see you all next weekend for some no more blah blah for some more Subnautica Below Zero. And make sure to tell all your friends and everything too. You can all come watch me play. I promise next time I play, I'm gonna do more exploration of the plot. I'm not just going to sit there building a house for so long. I will be exploring more of the map and getting more into um, Robin and her story, trying to find out what happened to her sister, Sam. Uh, so yes, thank you all for coming by. I have been uh, so happy to play Subnautica Below Zero here all with all of you. And I will catch you all next Saturday. Take care. Bye-bye.